So I'm waiting. I don't see myself live yet. I'm waiting to start. I don't, if you guys see me live, say something in the room because I don't actually see me live yet. I'm waiting. I got the email too. I think I got the email twice. Still offline. It says I'm streaming somewhere. This is going to make for a lovely replay. <laughs> it's a black screen. <clears throat> see me live well see a black screen at this point but do you hear me do you hear me anybody can you hear me now can you hear me now can you hear me now you, you do hear me you do hear me. Okay, there you go. Okay. Now, because <laughs> there are some changes this week. There are some changes to the show this week. So, let's roll that intro, shall we? And hello, <laughs> you might notice differences today. Just a few, just a few differences today. Um, first of all, if you check the, uh, the gear at the bottom of the screen, I think it's about right, about right here, I think, somewhere in here, uh, you will see that you can now view a magnificence of me. I'm saying that very sarcastically, by the way. AP. Okay. 1080. Um, you will also notice that the background is moving and the scroll is scrolling, right? Uh, you're going to see. I got a new computer, guys. I did. I did no more using that four year old laptop to try to stream with you guys. I got a new David built it. <laughs> feedback. Ooh, what kind of feedback? I don't hear it. Where would it be coming from? Um. Oh. It's the headset. It's the headset losing signal. Fuck. All right. No, no. It's the headset losing the signal. It's fully charged. Hang on.
Okay. Let's see here. Did that fuck everything up? How is that better? Okay, looks smooth. You guys, I see, is it, I don't hear any static. Much better, okay. I had to take, here's the thing. Here's what happened. This is the one drawback so far that I found. Uh, the dongle, because this is wireless. Woohoo, no wires, okay. Um, it, it, no, it, it should be fine. I moved it, the dongle now from, I put it on the front of my machine. So that now means I don't have any frontward um, USB ports on my new machine. That's okay. That's okay. Um, so, however, this may actually mean I will not be able to go into the lab uh, because I used to have trouble. The, the dongle used to sit like right behind my monitor here. It was on a USB hub. So it was like, a little extender about this long, but I had it propped up like behind my monitor. And, and that was barely enough to reach into the lab. Now it's sitting on the floor and it's got a desk in the way. We'll see, I can try to go to the lab, but if I get the static in the beeps, we're just, we might have to forgo the lab today. Move the dongle to go to the lab. I, I can't move it. Move it where? I, I, can't, I can't move it anywhere. <laughs> There's nowhere to move it, dude. All right, anyway, so, um, but well, basically, you know what, let's just start this over. I got, um, I've got good news and I've got bad news. I've got, I've got, I've got lots of good news to share with you guys. Um, but I do have some bad news. So, oh, it was in the perfect, I don't think so, David. I don't think so. Cause I was walking around earlier and I was getting static. I don't, I don't think it's in the right place at all. I don't No. 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 I think it needs um, maybe not completely clear line of sight, but almost a clear line of sight. It really needs that. So we'll we'll see. We'll, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll have to test it. I didn't know any test runs. Oh damn! I thought for sure I was gonna avoid that error message. I just got a high CPU usage detected error. David, I thought you built me a badass computer. I really did. I thought I just got a high CPU usage detected message. It went away really quick though. All right. So I have good news. I have bad news. Let's start with the bad news so we can move on to good news. Okay. Um, right up here. For those of you who follow me on or, or not follow me, that sounds kind of weird, but those of you who are friends with me on Facebook um, or friends with David on Facebook or follow our YouTube channel, um, you may have seen uh, the notification yesterday that uh, we lost our beloved Pepper yesterday morning. I'm not going to cry. I promised myself I wasn't going to cry. Um, he was almost 17. I don't know, almost. I'm not exactly sure when his birthday was. I want to say it was in maybe July. So he was 16 and a half. Um, he had a good life. He was a good, healthy puppy. Uh, over the last year, his health started deteriorating, um, which happens, you know, when you're that old. Um, he was a chihuahua. He looked just like the Taco Bell dog. Uh, and, and the funny thing about Pepper was too, is that, you know, I mean, he would go crazy if you brought home takeout, if you brought home fast food or something like that. And they could smell it, you know, as soon as you walk in the door and the dogs would go nuts. Um, but Pepper would go particularly crazy when I brought Taco Bell into the house. So, uh, you know, I mean, he was exceptionally just apeshit crazy when I would bring Taco Bell into the house. And I would just look at him and I'm like, dude, you're perpetuating the stereotype. Uh, but yeah, the, my, little, my little Mexican dog, uh, Pepper, um, he passed away yesterday. Um, I have known him since, uh, for the last five, almost five and a half years now that I've been with David. Um, David got him as a puppy. Uh, so he was just a little bitty baby puppy. He was just, you know, two months old when David got him. And uh, he's had him now for over 16 years. Um, your, your buddy has a chihuahua named Taco. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Pe Pepper's name is actually Pepperoni. Uh, Pepper for short. 
I when I first met Pepper, I thought they were being funny because he's tan and white, and uh, or, or mostly tan, but kind of had a white underbelly, kind of faded into white. He didn't have spots or anything like that. Um, he was like tan on his back and then white. And I, I was like, I thought he looked more like salt than he did Pepper. And I thought that's what the, the, why they named him Pepper is just to be funny. Um, but no, it turns out his name is actually Pepperoni. Uh, and uh, but we called him Pepper, or Pep Pep, or Brat Dog, or Ninja Dog, or Twinkle Toes. Uh, we called him lots of things because he was a good dog. He gave the best hugs. He did. You pick him up, and he would just he would just hug. You know, he was so little too. He was six pounds. He just hugged, hugged. So, um, over the last year, his health began deteriorating. Uh, a little bit, not a lot. He was still a good dog. He was still active. He still liked to cuddle. Um, I think his hearing went. I think his, you have a little butthole min pin. <laughs> min pins are something else too. I've, I've, I've known quite a few actually. I, I like min pins. Um, I'm pretty sure his hearing went because uh, I definitely felt that he could not hear me most of the time. Either that or he was choosing not to hear me, which, you know, I wouldn't put it past him. Uh, but his, uh, he started to go into kidney failure uh, about a year, year and a few months ago. Um, so I had him on a kidney diet uh, that was specially formulated to not make the kidneys work so hard to process the food in your, in your belly. Um, and then uh, a few months ago, he started, I mean, he always had a bit of a cough. And he did. He was diagnosed with a heart murmur and an enlarged heart um, about six months ago or so. Um, the cough got really, really bad, and so I took him to the vet. And I'm like, "Look, he's coughing crazy, and like, it's like it can't be comfortable, you know." So uh, she said, "Well, if he has an enlarged heart, and what happens is, is when the heart is enlarged, you get fluid build up around the heart, and it pushes on the lungs, and it makes you feel like you have to cough, which this is the beginning phases of congestive heart failure." She said, so we need to put him on heart medication um, that'll relieve the pressure on the heart and it'll make the cough subside. And I was like, okay, you know, she said, well, here's the drawback. Okay, you start giving him heart medication and it makes the kidneys work harder. So um, we tried it uh, for two weeks and um, the, me the medication worked, but he was lethargic. He didn't want to eat, you know, he just, just wasn't himself. So I went back to... Um, I went back to the doctor and I said, look, I said, it's working, but I, maybe we could try, like, you know, because I don't want to, I, I know, you know, I, I know the time's coming, but I want him to be, I don't want to do crazy treatments on him. I don't want to traumatize him. I just want him to be comfortable in the time he has left. So I was like, let's, let's try backing the medication off a little bit. You know, I was giving him the smallest, teeniest, tiniest dose possible, but I was giving it to him twice a day. So I said, okay, let's, let's give it to him once a day. The doctor wasn't too keen about that. She said, it doesn't really work as well if you don't do it twice a day. But she said, if that's what you want to do, that's what we'll do. I said, yes, that's what I want to do. So um, we did that and it still controlled the cough. He wasn't coughing, it was still working. And he started getting a little more lively again. He started eating again. He started wagging his tail more. He started getting more excited to, you know, see people when they walk in the room and, and that kind of thing. So uh, he's more alert. So I was like, okay, this is, this is working. Um, this is working just fine. Um, but uh, it was Thursday night. Thursday night, I, I, came, I was late. I was coming, I was, I was getting home very late. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I'm going to segue, segue here into a little bit of advocacy work. All right. I know there's only 14 of you watching right now. There's only 14 of you watching. Come on. Where is everybody? A <laughs> um, little bit of advocacy work is uh, I, uh, David has uh, put the wheels in motion uh, to bring a billion lives right here to our hometown in Gwinnett County, Georgia. They're snowed out. Snow, you can't be snowed out of YouTube. It doesn't work. You can't do it that way. Okay. So he he scheduled this, um, and, I, and I know what he was thinking. He was like, okay, I'll schedule for the end of January. That's enough time to get past the holidays and kind of get people back on board with this whole advocacy thing, all right? There will be more in a minute. TBC is finishing. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. If you check the gear, and like I think, I think that gear is about right, right, maybe right here. 
Um, why don't uh, you see I'm casting in 1080p? What? Okay, so we'll get back to my computer though. We'll get back to that in a minute. So I, I don't know what day. So David's thinking, okay, you know, um, he's because he's got to listen. It was around Thanksgiving, I think, or beginning of December. He said, um, you know, okay, I'm going to bring a billion lives here to Gwinnett. Great. Um, so uh, he scheduled it. And he said, let's go to. I know, right? Can you like see all my flaws? Can you see actually that I don't? I actually do look 43 years old now. I'm I'm not actually watching myself in 1080p. Um, but that I'm actually watching my watching the cast, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, I'm, I have not been able to do that in a number of. Uh, I, I've never been able to do that actually. Uh, it always bogged the cast down if I had to if I had the cast going and the stream going at the same time. So anyway, I'm getting my camera's not 1080. Oh, you're right. My camera's not 1080, so I probably shouldn't be casting in 1080. But I do have a 1080 build. You know what? Don't let me get ahead of my story. Don't let me get ahead of my story. Okay, we'll be getting to that in a minute. All right, just, just, just. Okay. All right. So, um, I do want to put. So anyway, so what happened was is uh, David's thinking, okay, you know, I'll do it at the end of and end of January. Get people back onto the advocacy train. They'll have a chance to get. Uh, uh, done with uh, Christmas and all that stuff. Uh, David, go check our customer list, please. We just got a new customer, so would you please go and approve him or her? Um, yeah, not gender specific. I have no idea who it is. I just got an email notification that we have a new customer. Anyway, um, crap. Where was I? Oh, and uh, so with you know Christmas and, and New Year's, and we had uh, you know my my new computer and. Uh, you know, all that kind of going on. We, we kind of lost our focus with the Billion Lives thing. And I went in there the other night because I was designing a poster um, that we're having a big 20 by 30 poster printed um, to hang one hang here and one to hang at our local vape shop at the East Second Vape Depot. And, uh, ooh, what's, what's Smokey got? I can look, I can open up tabs. I can open Oh, nice. Yes. Very, very nice. Very nice. Yes. I will bring that up as well, but I got to get through my story first, uh, Smokey. So thank you for that reminder. All right. So um, I went into, I was designing the poster, right? And I went into the link uh, that we've already have set up and everything. And I said, holy shit, I have 14 days left to um, get this thing secured because we hadn't we hadn't even started promoting it yet. none none whatsoever uh oh the British invasion thank you David the British invasion is coming woohoo I'm not starting all this over again okay y'all missed what the stuff I already talked about okay so um. I'm designing the poster and I said, holy crap, we only have 14 days left to sell enough tickets to secure the event, right? Uh, so I, I went crazy. I designed the poster. I went on Facebook. I created an event. I shared it in all the local groups. Uh, I, I know y'all need to like whip them a little bit. I'm just saying, I mean, I've been on now. Nitro ran into my time a few minutes, but I've been on for over 20 minutes. I'm just saying, guys, y'all need to like crack that whip. I mean, come on. Thank you. No, thank you very much for coming over here. I appreciate it, guys. Mwah, I love you all. Then, um, so I kind of went crazy because I'm like, oh, my God, we have to start promoting this. Like, now, right? Uh, and uh, I, so I was here late. That, that was not the point of my story is that I was here late uh, Thursday night. It was about 12 midnight, actually, I think. And uh, I went home. Now, no matter how late I stay here. Um, I always, always, always try to spend some time with the dogs, even if it's just sitting on the couch with them, watching some TV. I always try to spend at least an hour um, with it, uh, blah, 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 with um, with the dogs. Uh, so I came home, you know, it was 12, 12 30-ish, I guess, and uh, I sat down on the couch. My stepson was awake, and uh, so we actually stayed, we ended up actually staying up chatting for a while. I, I have fed Pepper. Uh, I gave him his special KD diet, his kidney diet. 
Uh, and he ate he ate really well too actually he ate better than he had in in a, in a while uh, so I was really happy about that and, um, and then he stayed on the couch with me while me and Zachary talked and he cuddled and he slept and he snored and and it was all good now hi vapor bunny so uh, it was like three in the morning actually when Zachary and I decided to wrap up our chat and go to bed and uh, so I, um, time to get, aw, thank you, RS. <laughs> so I, you know, now here's the thing. David trained Pepper from the time he was just a puppy uh, to that he was not allowed in the bedroom and he was not allowed to sleep in the bed. I do not have that policy, okay? So my Shih Tzu would definitely sleep in the bed with me. Um, but Pepper had, you, you know, from the time I met him, he, he doesn't even show any interest in it because David trained him that way. So he has no interest whatsoever in coming upstairs and sleeping in the bed with us. Uh, so when we would go upstairs at night, um, he would just curl up on the couch and, you know, he kind of liked his alone time, I think. So I don't know if he did or not, but that's what he did. He did It didn't seem to bother him that the other two dogs would go upstairs. He didn't follow them. He didn't try to get in the bedroom. If he had, I probably would have given in, just saying. Um, and uh, so it got to be like three in the morning and I said, okay, you know, it's time to go to bed. I put Pepper on the couch. I tried to wrap him up in a blanket, but he wasn't having it. He, there was a pillow sitting on the floor that he likes to, likes to sleep on. Um, so I took the Shih Tzu upstairs with me and I went to bed. Uh, Pepper uh, obviously went down on the floor and he found his favorite pillow and he curled up and he went to sleep. Um, I slept in a little, I slept in a little on Friday. And uh, I, um, I got up late, you know, I took a shower. It was three in the morning when I went to bed. So I you know, took a shower, kind of wandered downstairs at about um, uh, noon, I guess it was. And um, I was gonna give Pepper his medication, his heart medication. And I found out that he discovered that he had passed away. Um, I don't know exactly when, um, but he passed away in his sleep. It was very peaceful. Um, there wasn't any, there wasn't any indication that he even woke up, really. He looked like he, I thought he was sleeping, actually. I had no idea that he'd passed away. Um, and so, you know what, Fire? I think, I think I saw that email, but it was like yesterday. And I didn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't doing much of anything yesterday, to be honest with you. Um, Thank you, Vapor Bunny. Thank you. Yes. Um, like I said, I thought he was still sleeping. He looked very peaceful. Um, he, I, it was a surprise. It was a surprise to find out that he had passed away. Um, thank you, D. Mellon. I, thank you, Mush. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we, uh, David, David is definitely taking it pretty hard. Uh, he's had Pepper since he was a puppy, since he was just a little baby, baby puppy. So he's had Pepper for over 16 years. I've had Pepper for the five and a half years that I've known David. Uh, so he was a big, big part of our lives. Um, I just loved it when he and Fizzgig were together because they were almost the same color. Uh, I mean, Fizzgig has got spots, you know, she's got big patches of tan on her. She's tan and white um, and Pepper was more overall tan, um, but they just looked really cute together. I called them my little blonde Yip Yip Brigade. Thank you, Cool Vape. Thank you, Zen Buddha. Thank you, Fire Owl. Thank you, Granny. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Lulu. Um, it was it was very hard. I didn't know what to do. Um, I've never had a pet pass away at home before, actually. Uh, so I didn't know what to do. You know, I, every time I've ever lost a pet. Thank you, Niji. Yes, I'm not gonna cry. You're not gonna make me cry. Um, the the last time uh, or the any time I've ever had to you know uh, I've ever had a pet pass away on me I've always had to make that decision to take them into the vet and uh, have the have them put down uh, you know it was you know due to medical reason it was always due to medical reasons I've never put a pet down for any other reason other than their quality of life was not worth living kind of thing uh, you know so. Um, Thank you, Tiger. No, please don't cry. Um, he had a wonderful life and a long life. He was, you know, going on 17 years old. 
um, which is which is a good long long life for a chihuahua um, but I never had one pass away at home before so I didn't know what to do you know I called my doctor and I told them and um, they actually gave me the name of the pet crematorium that they work directly with so they're like you can bring him in here and we'll take care of him or you can take him directly there and they'll take care of them and uh, we decided that we wanted to keep his his ashes uh, in a little in a little pet urn. Uh, so we have that coming. I believe it's going to be here Monday. Um, and uh, we took him down to the crematorium. The crematorium people were very very nice. Um, they they acted just like a funeral home people would. You know they were very soft spoken. They were understanding. They always referred to him as a baby. Um, they brought in a little basket for us to lay him in so that we could spend some time with him and I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. And, um, you know, we, uh, oh, and we're going to get the little plaster paw print as I did. I splurged, I splurged $35 extra to have the little, little plaster paw print, um, done. So, that that fab of how they are yeah they're um they're very i know but i'm not i'm not gonna cry on uh i'm not gonna cry publicly <laughs> um so we're uh we're missing him i would like to show you a video uh like i said david's having a hard time with this too he's had pepper for over 16 years Thing. Oh, that's that's sweet. Yeah, we they showed us the plaster print, and I said, okay, um, yeah, we want that. We we definitely want the little paw print. It's really it was really cute, and um, it's it's probably gonna be huge. His little paw was you know tiny. I mean, his paw was probably only about that big, but and the 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 plaster piece is like this big, you know. So his little paw is gonna be in the middle of it like that, but um, it's still something I think that would be nice. So. Okay, no crying. Wipe the tears away. Um, but uh, David came home and um, kind of put everything on hold. Actually, he um, he decided he wanted to put together a slideshow, a little video of uh, some of Pepper's, you know, finer moments in uh, in his, throughout his life. Uh, you know, about half of these are probably pictures that I took, and the other half are pictures that that uh, he ta he had taken before I came along. So, um, I would like to play this little video for you guys. Absolutely. Life is a book that we study Some of its leaves bring a sigh There it was written by my buddy Yeah, we must crawl, you and I Nights alone Since you went away I think about you All through the day My buddy My buddy, nobody quite so true. Miss your voice, touch of your hand, along the door that you. Understand, my buddy, my buddy. 
buddy Your buddy Missing you Nobody misses you I miss your voice Touch of your you hand yeah. And I long to know That you understand My buddy My buddy, your buddy, Missy, you. Okay, so I'm better now. Um, thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Ginger. Uh, thank you all for all. I mean, I have gotten the hugest outpouring of kind words and support um, on my Facebook page. Uh, I, 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 uh, I shared it. I'm, I'm a member of a group for Shih Tzu owners, and they say it's called for the love of a Shih Tzu, but they said, you know, pretty much any little tiny fluffy dog will fit in, uh, fit in the mix. So, so Pepper definitely qualifies as um, being a tiny little fluffy dog. Um, and, and I've gotten a huge amount of outpouring there too, just kind words and support, um, just hundreds of comments and and likes and and loves and cries and uh, just you guys have been really, really sweet and and supportive. Uh, David put up that video on on our our uh, Higgy Sigs YouTube page. Um, yeah, I, I um, Nate uh, Nate has several dogs, and one of them is a Chihuahua. It's a two little two pound Chihuahua. And the two-pound Chihuahua definitely rules the roost. I mean, he's got uh, he's got some big dogs. He's got a Labrador Retriever and a Pit Bull and um, a couple of others that are you know good-sized dogs. And the, it's the two-pound Chihuahua that that is the alpha dog, which is I think hilarious. Um, oh, Storm, you know I that I've had that happen actually. I, I used to raise and rescue domestic skunks. Yes, I said skunks. And I, I did. I lost two of them um, three months apart. Uh, so it 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 got it. It's hard, man. It's hard. I'd had them both for ten years, and um, it's yeah, it's hard. <laughs> it's, you know, they just wiggle their way into your heart. You know, they're a part of the family. So uh, yes, can, congratulations, or you know, give David all the props for uh, the um, the the video because he put that together and uh, um, posted it up last night. You can see it anytime on our Higgy Sigs YouTube page. So um, that is our sweet little pepper. And um, she will always believe they're great, Dane. I, I, like I said, Joanne, I think you came in after I said this, but um, I said Chihuahuas are, uh, um, they're a 40 pounds of Doberman in a six pound body. That's, that's their, their mantra. You know, they, they think they're Dobermans um, and, they, and they definitely act like it. Um, there, you know, Pepper was no different. Uh, he, you know, he would fiercely bark at anybody, strangers that came to the door and, and he'd get to play in and he'd, he'd curl those lips up and, you know, and just, uh, uh, he was, uh, he was something else though. He definitely was. 
Um, so we'll be getting his ashes. I've and I've never done this before. I've I've had many pets over the years, many pets that I have loved, uh, but never as much as I love my dogs. Um, and uh, so I've never done this before. I've never had a pet cremated uh, and had the, the remains, uh, you know, save the remains. This is the first time I will have ever done that. And uh, right, Great Danes think they're lap dogs. I've seen so many videos of that. Have you seen that one video where the guy has the two Great Danes and the one is getting love from daddy and the other one is sitting on the couch like, excuse me, what are you doing? And he's like, it's your turn. You stop growling. You just 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 wait your turn you know it's her turn now and the dog just like plops on the couch like fine <laughs> like you just can't handle it he's got to be you know got to have you know dogs dogs are fantastic i love my dog love 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 my dog um all of my dogs all of my dogs i have i have, well, I, have I had three i have two now it says it's hard it's so hard um I came home last night and and I I was making something in the kitchen and I I expected to trip on him because no matter how many times he got kicked accidentally got kicked uh, in the kitchen uh, he still wanted to stand right there like right right at your feet or in between your feet or right in front of your feet you know like he he was sure you were gonna drop something while you were cooking and he could eat it. Um, so he, and it didn't matter how many times, you know, you, you, you tried to pay attention to him, but sometimes you just, you know, didn't see him there and, and you'd end up kicking him and uh, he never learned. He never learned. Um, the, the two Shih Tzu, they've learned, you know, Fizzgig stays a couple of feet away from me. Miha actually usually stays out of the kitchen altogether, uh, but, but Pepper definitely, he was always right there, right, right in between your feet or right in front of your feet and, uh, and he'd get, he'd, he'd end up getting kicked. Um, many times while you're walking around your kitchen trying to cook and I kept so I'm making my food and I kept thinking I was gonna kick him and, and of course he wasn't there um, and uh, you know and then I I sat down on the couch and usually when I have two people on the couch or when I'm when I'm sitting on the couch I've got fizzing and pepper immediately want to get up in my lap I guess first I sit down and they're immediately begging to get up in my lap you know so I pull both of them into my lap at the same time and, and then of course the last night there was only one uh, to pull up in my in my lap. So um, it's uh, it's hard. It's hard. I miss him. I miss him. But the good news that I do have to share is that if you haven't noticed the quality of this program, oh my God, I am casting in 720p. Uh, I'm currently, actually, I'm technically casting in 1080p, but my camera, this camera, this is a new cam, well, no, this isn't a new camera. Let me back up. How is the other pup doing? That is actually an excellent question, Twin Mommy. Um, Miha is very sad. Miha is pouting. Um, she's sleeping. Uh, she doesn't, she doesn't want to have a lot to do with us, actually. Um, she's, Pepper looks like an older version of Xena. Aw, bam bam. Um, that's so sweet. Um, they are, uh, they, Miha's very depressed. Fizzgig is, Fizzgig knows something's wrong and she's being a little bit more needy, like a little bit more affectionate and, um, really wanting to be close. Um, but Miha is really, really upset. Miha's, like, she doesn't even want affection. She doesn't want comfort. Uh, I mean, she'll take it if we kind of make her take it, but she doesn't want to stick around. She doesn't want to cuddle. She doesn't want to lay with us. She's, um, she's, she's pouting. She's not, she's not doing so good. I think they, they came downstairs, uh, yesterday morning, uh, with me. Cause like I said, I let them sleep in the bed with us and, um, they, they saw me come over to Pepper and they saw me discover him and, and I started crying and I called David and they, of course, they went over and they investigated. They sniffed at him and and I think they knew. Um, Miha just jumped up on the couch and put her head down. She don't, She just didn't want to have any anything to do with it. Um, she's really sad. You know, her and, her and Pepper got along really well. I, I tell you that what the difference was with uh, uh, the three of them is... Um, 
get me how to the vet. They have any depressants for dogs. Uh, I'm going to give it a few days, RS. I mean, I don't, I don't want to take away her depression. She need, uh, she might need it. Uh, so I'm going to give it a few days. If she doesn't start coming around within, say, a week, I will, um, I'll, I'll consider it. I'll consider it. But I want to, you know, she needs her time to grieve. You know, they're, they're, they're not that far off from people. And uh, so, but anyway, um, uh, yeah, no, she, she, um, I was wait, I was saying something else. Oh, but yeah, I, I am, I'm going to, I will, watch. thank you, RS. I will do that. I will. But yeah, she just, um, she just put her head down and she doesn't want, uh, she doesn't want to cuddle. She doesn't want to. She she played. She did play. David got her playing a little bit this morning. David uh, David started roughhousing with her a little bit, and he got her playing. Got her tail wagging. Um, I think she's gonna be okay. Oh, but I was gonna say the the dynamic uh, between the the three of them is uh, first of all, Fizzgig is very jealous. Okay, Fizzgig gets very jealous of anybody who wants to spend time with mom um, aside from her. Um, she would get more jealous over Miha than she would over Pepper. Pepper, she would cuddle with Miha, not so much. Um, Fizzgig is also a very territorial, okay? Uh, if you put a, a plate down on the floor, she will not share. Uh, she'll, she'll put her paws over the plate and, and hover over it so that nobody else can get to it. Uh, she doesn't want to share. Pepper and Miha, however, you could put a plate down on the floor and they would share. You know, Pepper be on one side, Miha be on the other, and they wouldn't bark at each other. They wouldn't growl at each other. They would just they would just share, and you know, lick the the remains off the plate. Uh, so, was David carrying a new meat scented juice with him at the time? <laughs> uh, she's eating Bam Bam. I always give them a cookie before I leave, and I did that this morning, and she took the cookie just fine. Uh, didn't hesitate. Um, I gave him some treats last night too. They did didn't hesitate to, to take um, to take the treats they just they just know something's wrong something's different and um, you know it'll it'll be okay though they're gonna be fine so ooh, my, no wonder that was so weak my batteries are almost dead she's been very active this afternoon the other dot problem that's going on I need to put these on the charger is that my stepson and his girlfriend have moved in with us. And then, now they've been here for a couple months. Most of you probably know that already. But um, they brought a cat, a young cat. Now my dogs are a little older. So they're not quite used to the rambunctiousness of the cat. Miha is, uh, loves cats loves them. She's obsessed with cats. You bring a cat in the house and she's like, you brought me a pet? You brought me a pet? Please, can I have the pet? Please, 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 can I have the pet? I like to lick their ears. I mean, she like, I, she, she goes crazy over cats. Okay. But, oh, you had a dog die of broken heart syndrome. Oh, oh that's so sad. I'm sorry. One of, I remember when I said I had two skunks that lived to three, died three months apart. I'm, I'd had them both since they were babies like six weeks old kind of babies. And um, so they grew up together completely. And and Honey absolutely loved Deanie. Um, didn't want to be anywhere, didn't want to be where Deanie wasn't kind of thing. And uh, when um, when Deanie passed away, I, I she, she died of a broken heart. She just was lonely and she missed her sister, you know? So I believe you, there is a broken heart syndrome. Um, I think Miha's going to be okay. Uh, Miha has only been with us for a little over three years. Um, she grew up in a house of pit bulls, actually, with a friend. I, she was a friend of mine's dog, and uh, so she's she's used to being in a pack, um, and, and probably used to rotating members of the pack. You know, so. But yeah, no, I I agree with you, RS. That's that's a, it's a good. It's a good note to make in your mental Rolodex back here, you know, when you have animals that are very close and uh, one of them passes away. Keep an eye on the other one. So. That's better. So, 
where was I going with that? Um, well, I guess that's, 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 that's mostly it. I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm, um, I'm okay. Uh, it's hard, but I'm dealing. And David's okay, and it's hard, but he's dealing. You know, um, Zachary is, is doing okay. He's, uh, he's had a couple little breakdowns, uh, you know, because Zachary, I, Pepper's been in Zachary's life since Zachary was like five. I mean, he's basically had Pepper in his life his whole life. And, um, yeah, he was, he was five, I think, four, four or five when, uh, David got Pepper. So he barely knows life without Pepper. Uh, you know, the, the, the younger two, the twins, I mean, they, they were only a year old when David got Pepper. So they've literally had Pepper in their life, their whole lives. They, they don't know a life without Pepper. So it's, um, you know, the kids are, <sighs> I would like to say thoughts are with our friends across the pond with the terrible incident in Florida yesterday. Are you referring to the airport shooting? And yes, I agree. Um, I didn't know that much about it. I saw a couple of posts on Facebook about it, um, but I my was otherwise my brain was otherwise occupied yesterday, so I I don't know a whole lot about it. Um, yeah, it does. It sucks for kids, you know, because it you know it's it's a hard lesson. It's a hard lesson to learn. It really is. As I said, uh, moving on, um, I do have a much smoother stream today. I'm casting in high definition, and this camera that you're seeing here, um, this is the camera, this used to be my buildy cam. Um, I have a new, it's not new, it's actually, it was a, it's an old monitor, but so it's new to me. It's a new monitor, and I have my, my old, bigger monitor over here. Um, I'm actually watching the cast, which I was never able to do before. I always had to turn the cast off. Um, I have everything running. I don't have, every, well, I have a lot of things running. Um, I'm casting in, in, in high def, and uh, I've got moving background, scrolling banner, and uh, it, it all. look at this. It's, it's going smoothly. Um, I don't have music playing. Oh my gosh, Twin Mommy, whew, wow. I know, I, I, I finally let, I finally gave David the green light and I, and I wish you guys could see it actually, it's, it's pretty cool looking. Actually, I guess maybe you could see it. Here we go, here, do y'all wanna see it? Woo, I know you can't, it's dark, you can't really see it. But look at that. I got this funky red light on the front there. It's a big tower. It's a huge tower. You guys, I guess you guys can't really see that. I turned the lights off in my office because um, I thought it might give me better coloring. Um, but yeah. So, um, and I, I have my, I know it's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, but it's a big tower. It's got all kinds of video RAM on it, all kinds of RAM, processor speed, eight core processors, uh, just like hundreds of USB ports, <laughs> it's not hundreds, it's like eight though, like eight USB ports. Um, is that burning wood? It does kind of look like it, doesn't it? No, it's just like a red LED light. There's a fan on the light, so it makes it, uh, it yeah, it does look like that, yeah. But super, super fast. I can run everything now. I am still getting the high CPU usage detected pop up every once in a while, but it goes away pretty quick and it doesn't seem to be affecting my cast at all. I've got zero dropped frames. I'm watching the cast myself so I can see that it's running smoothly. I'm very, um, you have a USB on your desktop. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 Andy. Andy, this, number one, this is a better camera. But I made this, now David said I shouldn't do this. I made the decision to take my buildy cam camera and put it here, because I felt this would be a better way. Because, and I'm gonna show you why. I'm gonna show you why. I did get a new uh, camera for Christmas. My mother, or my brother, I don't remember. One of them bought it for me. My brother did, I remember now. My brother bought it for me. 
I got the Logitech 920 and I decided to make that my buildy cam. And here is why. I can zoom in. These are Aries's coils right here. I can zoom in on these babies. If it'll look at that quality. Oh my God. Look at those staggered fused Clapton coils. I mean, you could probably make a screenshot of this and copy my fingerprints. Holy crap. I mean, wow. And that is like right up on. I mean, right. There you go. Right up on the camera like this. Beautiful camera. And so I decided my ability cam needed to be the high def one. Um, ultimately, maybe I will get a second 920 and put it up here. Uh, that could happen too. I know, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> so, 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 so beautiful. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So I got my buildy cam. And um, I, it's the Logitech 9. It's, yeah, it's the Logitech 920 uh, Granny Vapes. So um, it's like. It's like 50 or $60 on Amazon, I think. I don't remember how much it is, but um, now get Jen another C920 for FaceTime. I know I have the, it's the C310. That's what this is. The C310 is this one here. Um, but yeah, I, I'll, I will probably get another, another one of these because that, that camera rocks. <laughs> Is that the same one that Gwen has? Uh, I do not know. I'm not sure what kind Gwen has. It probably is. Probably is. So, and I've had, so I, I've spent, that was the other thing I've spent a lot of time on this week. Um, oh, I know what I was gonna show you guys. When I said I was here late on Thursday designing a um, designing a poster, I want to show you guys the poster. So, and here's the thing, Nitro, if you're still watching, you need to attend this event and you need to get other people to attend it as well. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Oh, you can't hardly read that. Well, here's the, uh, I guess I will just have to read it to you. I mean, you can't read the stuff at the bottom, but for those of you who might be local, okay, for those of you who might be, what are you using for your microphone? I'm using my headset. This is the Logitech H800, I believe is the model number of it. It is a wireless headset. Um, it switches back between USB and Bluetooth, which is cool because uh, I, I wear it all the time during the day now and I can have it switch between my computer and my phone. All I gotta do is flip a little switch back here and it just goes over to my phone so I can like answer my phone and stuff. It's really cool. This is a good headset. This is another $50 headset. Um, oh, did I not answer a question? Is that the same one Gwen has? Yes. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, this is the microphone that I'm using right here. So, um, but anyway, so this is a poster I designed. Uh, this is the fight for a billion lives. Uh, and then I use the uh, images from the billion lives Facebook page. If you haven't already liked that page, please do. And, uh, January 26th at 2017 at 8 30 p.m. We are doing something a little different. We do you guys know with the studio movie girl? If anyone goes to see it, they can can they take a cam? Oh no, Simon. Here's the thing. We really want Aaron to make back his money. You know, he's invested a lot of time and a lot of money into uh, creating this documentary, which is a which is a very beneficial documentary to the vaping industry, and we want to make sure that he gets his money back for it. Uh, so. Uh, doing these screenings like this is um, is imperative. It's imperative so that you know he will continue to do good things for this industry. Um, and I think that it's important that we do that. However, um, 
Do you guys know what the Studio Movie Grill is? Anybody out there have Studio Movie Grills in your area? Uh, we have like four, actually. No, two. We have two. Dave and Buster's, we have four. We have two Studio Movie Grills. Do you guys know what the Studio Movie Grill is? And by the way, the only reason I'm not running music is because David hasn't cleaned my playlist yet. But by next week, I imagine I will have music running as well. And we can enjoy some music. <laughs> not heard of them. Okay. The Studio Movie Girl is a very, very interesting place. Because they do not serve soft drinks and popcorn like most movie theaters. Oh, no, no. You have, that's a bad date. I married my first wife on the 26th of January. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sorm. I apologize for that coincidence, but it was not intentional. Um, okay, bye, Granny. Uh, they do not serve popcorn and soft drinks and nachos at uh, here. Well, I mean, they might serve. Actually, I think they do serve those things. But that's not all they serve, okay? The Studio Movie Grill is a full-service restaurant, full-service bar, full-service restaurant, full menu, appetizers, salads, um, you know, steak, you name it. Okay, you've got drinks, you've got desserts. I think you can order popcorn if you want, but why would you? Because the food is actually really amazing on top of that. And you sit in a chair that has like, it's, it's almost like the old, like a, um, almost like a school desk, actually, the chair. I mean, it has a, it has a little table. I mean, the table swings out so you can get up and sit down comfortably, but it has a little table that swings out in front of you. And there's a button on the table, okay? Um, they don't operate it the way that a normal restaurant would. Like the waiters are not gonna come by and check on you because you know, you're watching the movie. So if you need anything, you push the button and they get notified and they come to you and they find out what you want. So there's nice wide aisles in front of every row so that the waiters can walk comfortably, deliver drinks, deliver food, deliver desserts, deliver appetizers. Um, not a problem, it was a better day. See, so it was a good day. Oh wait, that's the day you married your first wife. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, Yes, right to your chair service. Um, and, and like I said, there's a nice, it's the, the, the rows are not very cramped because you, you, they've got to have enough room for the waiters to walk past. They bring you your drinks, they bring you your stuff, food. You can order alcoholic drinks, you can order desserts. And the food is amazing. That's the other thing that's awesome about it. The food there is just out of this world awesome. Um, on the flip side, it's a little pricey. It's a little pricey. Lord help me, my three-year-old thinks he's too big to pee sitting down now. <laughs> Is he tall enough? <laughs> if he's tall enough, I mean, yeah. I, at three, I would imagine he's not tall enough yet. Give him a step stool. Um, they don't, the, now the, the Studio Movie Girl, at least not ours, I don't know if others do, but uh, a Studio Movie Girl does not have uh, couches or recliners. Um, I have been to a theater. As a matter of fact, we went to go see, um, where did, David, are you still in the room? Where did we go see Rogue One? Because that was, we didn't, no, wait, we saw Rogue One at movie, uh, Studio Movie Girl. Where did we go see Fantastic Beasts? That's, I was freaked out a little bit when I went to go see, we went to go see Fantastic Beasts and I was in a full-blown recliner. And I didn't like the recliner. The recliner bothered me because it was too easy to fall asleep. And I paid, you know, what, 12 bucks to see this movie. I don't want to fall asleep. Um, but I know, right? Well, I, right. That, yes, they do have drawings. Um, but no, where did we see Fantastic Beasts? Because that had the recliners. SMG doesn't have the recliners. Uh, and what you can't read on this poster here, down here at the bottom, that's it's a little too small. Um, to read is it says um, from 6 to 7 30 because we are partnering up we saw that at AMC okay AMC Colonial was that no AMC where I don't Sugarloaf that was it Sugarloaf thank you all right um, 
We are partnering with our uh, local vape shop, the eSig and Vape Depot, uh, to get this movie promoted and to get the tickets sold. Uh, so from 6 to 7.30, uh, they are having a pre-party show gathering. Uh, we're getting free hors d'oeuvres, you know, whore's divorce, and uh, free champagne. Yeah, I'm all about the champagne. I'm there, right? All right, so we've gotten free, free hors d'oeuvres, free champagne from 6 to 7.30 uh on the thursday night the evening of the 28th or 26th um and then uh, after that we are going to make our way over to the studio movie grill which is really just across the street um uh and we're going to watch the movie so uh that is the fun part uh we're going to have a nice fun evening and if any of you georgia people are watching please go to oh i gotta get the link up <laughs> I don't have the link up, uh, and I meant to. There it is. Ha <laughs> ha. There you go, guys. If you are local and you want to go see A Billion Lives, if you have not seen it yet and you want to see it, or if you have seen it and you want to see it again and you just want to support the vaping industry, um, please, please, please go to that link and buy a ticket. They're only $11, okay? I mentioned to David, I said, you know, I said, I just don't know about the Studio Movie Girl thing. Cause you know, there, it's like a, it's like a, like this could go one way or the other, right? Um, we got, on one hand, it's it's a little pricey. It's a little pricey. But on the other hand, do I have a discount code for flights and accommodation? <laughs> From the UK? I don't think so. <laughs> it took all it took is him walking on daddy once and he decided he had to be like daddy. Step stool. Ah. Yep. You're going to need a step stool, dude. Definitely going to need a step stool. So, um, but yeah, on the other hand, though, it's sort of like a whole night out, you know, having like dinner and drinks with all your fellow vapors and everything. So, um, and, and here's now here's the other fine print. David is getting ahead of me here. Um, the fine print at the very bottom. Okay. So six to seven thirty, we have going to the East and Vape Depot, uh, our pre-party, uh, pre-party party. party and a pre-show party, I guess you could say. Uh, from 8.30 to 10.30, we will be having the movie event. And here is the bonus, okay? Uh, if you save your ticket stop, you can go to the Easy of Ape Depot and get 20% off of anything you buy. Probably just one time, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, if you email us your confirmation, you get a coupon code, okay, that gives you a 120 mil bottle for a dollar. Now, does this sound like we're bribing you? Yeah, it does. It totally sounds like we're bribing you. Maybe we are. But the fact of the matter is you could spend a total of $12 and get a 120 mil of Higgy Juice. Um, so my order from you is in Florida at the moment. Uh, yeah, it, it's probably sitting in Miami, Simon. I would imagine that. I know Thursday is a tough day. It was it was hard to get it. it I don't think that David could get it secured for the weekend because, I mean, obviously they want new movie releases to come out on the weekend and they don't want to like reserve a whole theater for something that not that many people are going to show up to. I thought that was a misprint. Um, what was a misprint? Can we get that coupon for watching it in another city? Just asking. <laughs> no, you have to buy tickets for this one. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're we're trying to start promoting this very heavily on um, on um, Facebook and wherever else we can go. We uh, we're having these big posters printed. They should be ready soon, and then we can hang them up um, at the East Second Vape Depot, and that should hopefully garner more attention um, and get some more tickets sold. So. Um, and, and I would love it if you could fly it in. Do we know if they're going to bring it out on DVD? Fire Owl, I imagine they probably will eventually. But from what I gather, when it comes to movies, um, you make 
the most of your money when it's in the theaters, okay? Um, once you once it goes through the theater circuit, um, and then uh, what else? It has to go through something else. Um, basically, once it comes out on DVD and or is uh, available for rent, or like on Netflix or something, Netflix is sort of the end game. Like you still make money from it. Netflix, of course, still has to pay the people who made the movie or who produced the movie uh, a fee for keeping it in their library every month. Um, but it's you just don't make that much money off of it. Um, so DVD is sort of the last is the end game. You know, whenever it's available for purchase, they, the people just don't make a lot of money off of it. Wait, I can buy a $12 ticket even if I can't go and get one 20 mil for... Actually, you can buy... My, thank you, Dolores. Oh, that's very sweet. Erin um, is talking to big cable networks. Yeah, that was it. the next step, was it, that it airs on uh, on cable, on TV, like paid TV, and uh, then it, it ends up on DVD. So thank you so much, Dolores. Um, I hope so, too. And... And yes, RS, that is a, a little workaround, although we would really like people to be at the theater. Uh, we very, very much want people to be at the theater. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely hoping that, that not too many people that don't plan on showing up at all uh, try to do that. <laughs> Due to health, can't sit long. Oh, yeah, no. I, it's cool, Fire Owl. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. I get it. So, can't afford the airfare. I know, I know, man. I get it. I get it. And, and you know, but you, here's the other thing, too. It costs, like, nothing to bring it to your city. Um, actually, it, it's not like nothing. It actually is nothing. All you have to do is get in touch with the tug people. Tell them you want it in your city. Uh, they will coordinate it for you, or they will coordinate setting up the theater for you. Um, all you have to do is get people to buy tickets. Um, that's 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 your only job. I got something weird going on here. And um, anyway, so that's that's the easy way to do that. Yes, please do. Um, if you guys have not seen the event on Facebook. Let me pull it up. Events, 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 events. Um, please do share it. Share it everywhere. If there happens to be a Georgia person in the room or anywhere watching your posts, maybe they don't know it yet. I mean, uh, we feel that we are tapped in to the online community as much as possible, but we still manage to, you know, not reach everybody. It's coming to a theater right in my backyard. That's awesome. Okay, that is our Facebook event. Okay, so uh, yes, please, by all means, share it. Uh, share it anywhere that you think uh, vapors might want to be interested in it. Absolutely. It would be brilliant if it was being shown at Expo in the UK. I mean, Simon, well, it's not a theater, so I don't know that Tug can make that happen. But, you know, you could go to the Billion Lives Facebook page. Let me get that for you. A Billion Lives. Okay. You can go to the Billion Lives Facebook page. You can send them a message. There you go. And you could try to make that happen. I mean, it could happen. Maybe, you know, they'll, they could try to put up something where they're going to want to charge admission, though. That's just it, though. They don't want to show it for free. I mean, unless somehow the expo event could pay for it. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. I'm just not sure exactly how that would happen. Um, so. So how's my cast look? How is it running? Is it smooth? Am I choppy? Am I pausing or buffering? Because I have like the kick-ass internet connection. I have the kick-ass computer now. How's it going? How, how, how do I look, people? How do I look? I want to know. Oh, weird. I can't even... Running smooth? Running, so oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> ah. 
we, we, I'm so excited. Uh, no, and, and, and I get, um, I get my, my laptop back actually. I don't even have it here. I took it home. Um, so I get, I have my own personal laptop back now. You know, so it's, it's awesome. David did all the, the cool stuff and, you know, transferred over all my, my files and, and, you know, all the stuff that I have that I work with and I've, I have not needed, you know, it, it, it's been cool. It's very cool. Thank you, Andy. Um, I'm very excited. I mean, it's, it's kind of big. It takes up a lot of room, but, um, you know, sitting down here on the floor and, uh, no, no, yes. And not yellow. It's, it's not yellow. We shall see actually, cause I'll be at home doing trenches funny farm tomorrow. And, um, I'm going to bring home the, the good camera though. I want to see how that goes. I'm gonna bring home the good camera. Uh, the, like the good one, the Logitech, the, the, the high def one. And we'll see how that works. Um, doing trenches funny farm tomorrow. Just to calm the scare stories, like what kind of scare stories, like like the, like you know that vaping is bad and those kind of stories, and I agree with you totally. I mean that's what the film is designed to do. And what I did I turned off my overhead lights, and uh, I'm just using a desk desk light uh, to see how that works. I could turn the overhead lights on and see if it. I don't know. I think it might wash me out a little bit. Y'all want to try it? I'm all about experimenting. David needs to get you a good Logitech for home so you can keep the one you have here. Well, yeah, but I mean, I, it, it's not that difficult to disconnect it and take it home. But I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try the lighting. Here we go. I'm gonna get up and try the lighting. I'm gonna turn on the overhead lights. See what happens. How's that? Woo! Look, you can see the. You can see my hair, my green and my purple, and my hair. Woo! Look at that. Woohoo! So, I. I <laughs> it's just it's so wild. I have not had a new computer in years, guys. I am. Um, I'm very excited. I am. And I've got. Uh, like I said, I've got I've got so many things running right now. I've got I've got several programs open and running. I don't have Spotify running though, um, but I will I will attempt to do a test on that this coming next week, next Saturday. So yeah, yeah. I no Aussie. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure that what Jen wants. Usually Jen is the one to not to get it uh, because what Jen wants and what Jen needs. Um, I have this, this, this war in my head that tells me that I have to be practical about things. Um, so I got weirdness going on here. That I have to be practical about things. Could the UK VN try to speak to Expo about a billion lives? If not for this one, maybe the next. Um, I think that could happen. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I, I would say talk to, um, talk to Vic, uh, talk to Les, talk to Kelvin, you know, talk to the people who have a, a, an in with those people. And then you could get to, uh, you know, like I said, you could contact a billion lives and you could talk to them or, or the expo could talk to them about maybe doing a screening. Yes, Jen is um, very frugal. Um, I, I'm, I'm definitely one of those people that I'm like, nope, not allowed to do anything, not allowed to have play time until you finished work time. Uh, and it, um, it drives David crazy because David's all like, oh, I'm tired. I'm gonna take a break and, or, oh, I want to go do this instead. And I'm like, no, you can't do this until you finish that. <laughs> play time, work time. And, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm the one who, who, would not let him pull the trigger on the computer uh, for the longest time, even though I needed it, uh, or the camera for the longest time, even though I needed it. So yeah, no, it was, it was definitely, um, it's me, it's not him. It's not that he doesn't like doing things and buying things for me, because he totally does. Um, absolutely, he really does.
So you guys like this lighting better than the uh, the more the mood lighting? Mm. I bet you with the light on now, you can see my computer. Let's see. There you go. Woohoo! Look at that bad boy. Woo! Ha ha! <laughs> oh yes, it's very nice. I'm liking it. I know, right? That big red light on the front too is very fancy. I like it. It looks angry and evil. <laughs> nice one, Niji. All right, so the one thing that we did not plan for, which I will attempt, you know what? I'm gonna go over to the lab. Before we even attempt to, to, to talk about making anything today, I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the lab I'm gonna walk around the lab a little bit and I'm gonna see if I get static. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna, cause this was the one thing we didn't plan for was the fact that the dongle um, that goes to my wireless headset is uh, the old cold burning PCs. I remember them. <laughs> it's not old, it's brand new and it's beautiful. Um, but the, I used to have a USB hub attached to my laptop, which was up here on the desktop, right? So I had a little bit more of a line of sight to me here and to the lab. The dongle is now down on the floor and I'm pretty sure it's not going to reach into the lab. But I'm gonna go over to the lab, I'm gonna walk around a little bit and I'm gonna see if I get any static. And if I don't, then um, we'll attempt to make some juice today. How's that? So let's see what happens. Take one more vape before I go over there. All right. Oh, I'm getting some, I'm getting some static. Or that that is levelicious. Oh, <laughs> levelicious. <laughs> That's nice. Um, so you oh you lost me all together. You couldn't even hear me at all. I heard static. I, I figured it was probably beeping and driving y'all crazy. But you couldn't hear me at all. And it was gone. Yeah. I kind of figured that would happen. So Nitro may have story time, but I can do story time too. You couldn't hear Jack, not even a beeping noise. It beeped and then nothing. Okay, yeah, that is not gonna happen. No, that definitely not gonna happen. One beep and then no sound. Yep, okay. It was very staticky in my ear. I did not mute it. I, all I did was get up and walk to the lab um, but like I said, uh, we're talking now, instead of it being out in the open on top of my desk, it is now under my desk and more towards the floor. You've got my desk in the way, these monitors, you know, and across it, yeah. Maybe get a set of headphones for, here. well, I thought about that, Dolores, but the problem is that it has to be attached to this computer because this computer is running the cast. Um, so it, it, I, I, I just, mm, I don't know how to do that yet. I don't know. Where in Georgia is the movie? Hi, Ozzy fan. Um, it is in Gwinnett County in Duluth. Uh, that is not Duluth, Minnesota, in case uh, anybody from Minnesota is here. Or is it Minnesota? Duluth? Yeah, there's a Duluth in Minnesota. It's not that Duluth. There's a Duluth here in Georgia. Uh, Georgia copies city names from everywhere. So we have the, all of our city names are basically 
stolen from other people. Uh, <laughs> I picked up a Ferrari Red S SXQ Mini yesterday. <laughs> um, we are, Dolores. We're getting an extension, and we're going to put the USB hub on the extension and then mount it um, on the corner of my desk so there's a little bit more line of sight. Uh, but, you legend, that sounds beautiful. Do you have a picture? You have a picture? I can actually open new tabs now and not make the cast go crazy. Woohoo! <laughs> it's nice. It's nice. Oh. Ferrari red, though. That sounds beautiful. Yeah, we're going to Fire Owl. Um, as David's already ordered it, I think it'll be here Monday. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna bake yeah we're gonna we're gonna do that we're gonna actually it might even be better for the lab because we're gonna hang it like right at the corner of my desk um, so that it's it's actually even closer than it used to be so I I think it'll work I think it'll work great I am happy RS I'm like. I, I, I'm, I'm, it's different and it's new and I'm, I've never been one to shy away from change. I mean, I, I, I do like, I do like playing with new gadgets. I do like my new toys and, uh, call the tech department. I, I did, I did. And like I said, it'll be here Monday. Um, I should totally be able to go into the lab next week. I'll have to run some test casts, uh, before then to make sure, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm all ready. Bugga bugga. <laughs> So vaping with Vic's Facebook page. Okay, let me go see. Oh, never mind. He sent me a picture. Ooh, can I put it up and show everybody? Let's see. Download. Uh, let's save this in my vape stuff folder as Wilkes. Ferrari. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, let's take a look at this. Everybody. Desktop. Vape stuff. Wilkes. 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 There it is. Ooh, look at that. That is so pretty. Oh my God. Goodness gracious, that's so pretty. <laughs> With a twisted messes on top. Very nice. Very nice. Look at that. Very, very nice. It looks very sleek and ergonomic. I like it. I like it a lot. This camera is a little more zoomy um, than my other, than my laptop camera is. So like, I can get really close. <laughs> have to see. Uh, and I, I and it zoomed out all the way actually. So um, I'm, I'm a little. I don't want to get up too close. So I'm gonna be like, ah, oh, get right up in your faces. I know, right? The PJ bottoms are pretty awesome. No Geppetto. Is that another mod? See, this stuff comes out all the time and I have no idea what it is. You know what, Andy? I liked your uh, use of the, uh, of the term EG, but there is a trick because, you know, there's two of them. There's IE and EG. And people tend to not use them properly, okay? They they stand for IE and EG stands for some sort of Latin phrase, which I don't know the actual Latin phrases, but here is a way for you to remember which one to use because I think that that should have been an IE instead of an EG. Here you go. IE means in other words, okay? So I starts with in. So IE is in other words. EG means for example, okay? So E, example, 
E.G. means for example. Um, I.E. means in other words. See? Well, now, see, R.S., you had to just go and show me up and throw out the Latin terms, didn't you? I, <laughs> I didn't remember the Latin terms. I just remember I made the word association. I is for in other words. E is for example. So there you go. Geppetto is a very high-end stabilized wood. Yeah, you know, this, have y'all seen the new um, Snow Wolves? They have that. I, I, it's not stabilized wood, but oh, they're so pretty. They're so, so pretty. Take, Taken has just come on Sky. Can't wait for one of the best lines in movie history. <laughs> You did know that? Oh, that's cool. Well, I, I actually, I, I, mean, well, I don't remember when it was. It was, I mean, I don't know. Time flies. It's probably been 10 years ago since I made that association. But yeah, you know, as I, 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 was, I was looking it up and I was, I was reading on it or something and, and that, you know, that this is when you're supposed to use IE and this is when you're supposed to use EG. And I just remembered in my head, I, in other words, E, for example. And uh, so you always remember that in your head and you'll use the proper one next time. Most people won't even know you're using the proper one uh, because they don't know that. But I think it's important for everyone to be educated. Did I get your order? Kelvin gave me 50% code after we had our house robbed on New Year's Eve. Um, do you have an order number? Did you get an order number? Because um, I can tell you where it is if... I mean, I can tell you if it's not already on its way to you. Actually, I can tell you for absolute certain <laughs> that unless you ordered in the last couple of hours, it's on its way to you, if not already at your place. Uh, because I got all caught up today. Yes, two minutes. Ha! Thank you, Zamfuda. <laughs> I like to educate people. It's kind of my thing. Because, you know, I, I fear that the common sense and proper etiquette and proper English, you know, proper ways of speaking, civilization, I, I just, I really feel this is a soapbox of mine and I can't get off of it. I feel that we are literally witnessing the slow crumbling of our own civilization simply because we do not enforce the rules of communication and common decency, okay? Uh, I mean, it, 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 all civilizations fall, okay? Every civilization that's ever existed throughout history has fallen, okay? The Roman Empire fell, um, ancient Egypt fell, uh, you know, the, the uh, you know, what, uh, the, what the Chinese dynasties, they all fall, okay? Uh, they I had a physics professor that used IE all the time. <laughs> ah, 10, 1, 1, 4. Hey, did you see that? Did you see that? Wait, did you see that right there? Did you see that? Our order numbers have hit five digits. I'm so excited. I feel so official now. I feel like our order numbers, our order numbers, we started them out when we built the website. They started out at like literally at like one. Okay, it was like 0001. That was our, our first order number. Um, we have hit five digits. I feel like official. We have five digit order numbers. Peter North here. I've been vaping super liquid since this kidnapping thing in Chicago. Eh, okay. How much is shipping to the UK? Um, Chetley Man, I cannot go into the lab because my headset with my new setup does the, it's not reading its don, the dongle, so I can't I can't get into the lab today. Um, I would like to, but it's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Um, I want to answer how much is shipping to the UK. Um, Teresa, up to eight ounces, up to and including eight ounces, um, it is twelve dollars and eighty three cents. If you go over eight ounces, it jumps to twenty one thirty eight. Um, but that rate is good up to two pounds. You have to order a lot of juice to get over two pounds. Um, very rarely do I ever send anything over two pounds. Occasionally, I mean, sometimes people buy liters and those are of course weigh like three and a half pounds, I think. But, um, and then you, and then I can put the, put it in a, a flat rate um, uh, padded envelope or even a flat rate, uh, I gotcha, but don't worry about it. But I mean, basically it's, it's 1230, 1283, 
up to eight ounces. Over eight ounces is uh, 2138 up to two pounds. And then it goes up, I don't know, like nine or $10 a pound after that. Uh, so um, it's not too expensive and it's not great, uh, but it's not too expensive. We never charge you more than what we pay. Uh, so, and, and, and it seems to get over there pretty fast. Uh, I mean, I have no control over that. People's like, wow, you're so, such fast shipping. I'm like, I don't have any control over that. Apparently the USPS is doing their job. So, yay. Um, so don't be too pedantic. Languages are a fluid thing, e.g., <laughs> e.g., for example, ain't was not a proper word for a long time. Um, and this is true. Ain't wasn't. A proper word and and some, some people don't think it is but here's the thing though um i just feel that we are witnessing the downfall of our own society because we don't have as bam bam put manners common decency and proper communication okay um we let things slide a lot even in situations that they shouldn't you know, it's one thing if you're sending a text to your buddy and you use a lot of acronyms and um, abbreviations, you know, typing out PLS instead of P-L-E-A-Z or P-L-E-A-S-E, -E, um, typing out LOL or typing out um, yeah, the letter U instead of the word U. But it's getting to the point now where, I mean, like, you know, people send letters like in emails and it's like official, like, to, you know, to your boss or to a colleague. Um, we're using text speak. Uh, people don't know how to properly speak to each other uh, using proper English. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, communication is the backbone of any civilization, um, being able to communicate with each other and uh, being able to communicate properly to each other. So. It's a pet peeve of mine, and I just can't get past it. You know what I'm saying? Right? It's huge. <laughs> it's huge. Bring back the draft. Oh, Aussie's got a. Aussie's got a. Uh, uh, that's a, that's that's a thought. Uh, you know, it's I'm I'm I can't say I totally disagree. Thank you very much, Teresa. I look forward to it. Why is my system beeping? I don't even know what's going on. Oh, it's. Facebook is beeping at me. Okay. All right. Um, it's fab for speed, Teresa, and cheaper than other U.S. companies. Thank you, Fire Owl. I know. I hate. I hate that. That um, there are cer certain things that do get on my nerves uh, when people say Pacific instead of specific, or uh, when people say supposedly instead of supposedly, <laughs> um, or there's one that I was guilty of too. I'm trying to think, of, there's one that I, uh, there's one I am guilty of. Oh, the couldn't care less. Um, I have a hard time getting out of that habit. Couldn't care less, or no, I could care less. That, that's the way, I'm, I'm, you see, I'm actually getting out of the habit. Um, when somebody says, oh, I could care less. Well, when you say you could care less, that actually means you do care because you could care less. It's I couldn't care less. Um, that And that's what I'm, I'm actually getting out of the habit, that slowly getting out of that habit. Um, that was a very bad habit of mine. Um, a, you want to ask me a question? You want to ask me a question? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, proper, proper language leads to clarity. I agree. Okay, Shelly won a code yesterday, but not sure what to get. Ooh. Well, we should bring back uh, national service here. Okay, I don't know who is, is making comments on my... I, I got tagged in a post. Okay, I'm going to close my Facebook because that's driving me crazy. I'll get back to it later. Um, yes, literally, figurative, you know, the, the terms literally and figuratively... Those are all kind of pet peeves, though. Um, what really bothers me is not just the language and the communication, um, but just the, the lack, I guess, almost like lackadaisical, the lackadaisical way that um, 
the, the people of authority, you know, like teachers or employers, are letting typos and text speak kind of slide, you know? I mean, I don't want to be a grammar Nazi, but I, I want, I just, I don't know, I just wish I could get back to the roots of things, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you, Fire Owl. <laughs> um, I can tell you my favorite, actually. They say low ohms. Well, low ohms is, I did mute Facebook, damn it. Um, oh, you tagged me in a picture. Uh, see, it's Shelly's fault. We can blame Shelly. Shelly did it. It's all Shelly's fault. This is kind of high up. Let's see. Let's put this down a little bit. There we go. Oh, that's more comfortable. Shelly did it. Um, if you adhere to signs, you'd never be able to use an elevator in case of fire should be in the event of <laughs> fire. <laughs> I had a couple, and I remember I made a post about this on my Facebook page once, because um, there's a couple of incidents that truly showed me that, um, you know, that we were dumbing down our society. And the one I can, and I can't remember exactly what it was, but I remembered I was looking up something in um, the phone book. Yeah, this was back in the day, before we really had the internet. Um, I was looking up a phone number in the phone book. Do y'all still get phone books? I haven't gotten a phone book in years, which is good because I had a stack of them out in my garage that was like six feet tall. Because um, I, I live in Metro Atlanta. Okay. Metro Atlanta is, I mean, we have over 5 million people here. Actually, there's probably over 6 million people now. Okay. So I would get several phone books. Okay. I would get a Yellow Pages, um, or I'd get two Yellow Pages. One was like A through L, and the other was like uh, M through Z. And then I would get the White Pages. And you know, Yellow Pages is all businesses and ads, that kind of thing, right? Then I get two volumes of the white pages, which is residential phone numbers and, and business listings, but there's no ads in it, right? Um, again, A through L, M through Z. Um, and these books were like this. I mean, you know, they're made like with like Bible paper. The, the, the pages are very, very thin, but they're like this thick, right? And so I get four of them. And then I would get a, um, I think I would get a Gwinnett one. That's the county I live in. And then I would also get a Lilburn one. I would get a Lilburn Yellow Pages and a Lilburn White Pages, which is just the city I live in. Um, so I mean, I would literally get like six, seven phone books every year. Okay, and they would they would just they would just throw them on my doorstep, right? And I never used them. I rarely used them, um, especially once the internet came along. They've stopped sending them, which is cool. <laughs> They're probably saving a shit ton of money by not printing them. However. Um, this was back in the day. I was looking something up and NIH has signs in their elevators that say no smoking enforced by ordinance. <laughs> you never know, RS. You never know. You never know. So, um, and for argument's sake or just for the story's sake, let's say I was looking up BMW. All right. Now, um, BMW, for those of you who do not know what BMW stands for, it actually stands for Bavarian Motor Works, okay? They are a German, well, Bavaria or company over in Europe somewhere, okay? Um, but they're listed, the company is listed as B space M space W. Okay, that's, that's the way it's listed, all right? Um, for those of you who uh, know how to uh, alphabetize, which I'm assuming all of you do, uh, the space is the very first thing in the alphabet, okay? You've got spaces, um, and then you have letters, I think, and then numbers, and then punctuation comes after numbers, all right? But space is, is first. Space comes before A. So I looked, um, I looked in the Bs, right? And the first starts out with B space, right? And so I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I get to the B space M, and there's no listing. Hmm. Well, okay, maybe it's there's no spaces, right? So I went forwarded through the B's and I went to the BM place on the uh, uh, in the phone book, right? And I found it, but it was not listed as BMW with no spaces. It was actually listed in the phone book 
in the BM space as B space M space W. And I don't know why, but that just really rubbed me wrong. Like what the, wh why? I, I, almost like how, how did that even happen? Like the computer couldn't possibly have alphabetized it that way. And why, why would it, why would you take it out of its proper, al proper alphabetical order and put it in a spot that it didn't need to be? Like th this is just what told me that we're just accommodating the lowest common denominator and it's just, just going to keep snowballing. Rant over. I donate mine to Jeff Capes. Who's Jeff Capes? Laser, right, Dolores? And that would work on vape too. No vaping in the elevators. So let's talk about, well, I know they do, but that's not how it was listed. It was listed B space M space W in the phone book, but it wasn't listed at the beginning of the B's where it should have been. It was listed in the middle of the B's at BM with no space, but it actually had the spaces in it. That's, that's what really messed me up. Like how, why was it listed here in the middle of the B's instead of at the beginning of the B's? Like it just pissed me off. So let's talk to Teresa though, because Teresa wants to place an order. Let's tell her all our favorites, shall we? Let's let's talk about our favorite Higgy juices. I want to do that. Um, my favorite is key lime ice cream right here. Look at that. It's not good. You know what? We're gonna do a buildy cam. How's that? Buildy cam because my buildy cam is awesome. What what? What, 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 here we go. Key lime ice cream. And is it not going to focus? Come on, focus. 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 Come on. Focus on that text. There we go. Key, oh. There we go. Key lime ice cream. This is my vape all day, every day. Love it. Can't get enough of it. And this bottle's a little bit old. You can see. Look at that. I made it day before Christmas. Um, so that's why the label is a little dilapidated. But this is my favorite. Um, I love it. I vape it all day, every day. I have a hard time making myself. Um, Stop vaping it even to test other juices. <laughs> even to test other juices. I, I don't want to stop vaping. I love it. I can't get enough. Um, Gwen's, okay, so everybody's spouting off their favorite Higgy juices. Red Chick says Gwen's Flufferment. That is a marshmallow and peppermint vape. Uh, it tastes like those uh, restaurant candies, those little puffy mints. Nilla Nuts is very, very popular. Um, that was a, a recipe, one of four recipes actually that were given to us uh, by Asbestos and Scuba. Uh, they, uh, they came to us and they said, hey, look, you know, we have these recipes. People ask us all the time to make it for them uh, and we're kind of tired of making it for everybody. So we'd like to, we'd like you guys to sell it and that way we can just direct people to your website and uh, everybody's happy. So um, I got, I, Nilla Nuts is the most popular one. There's also Nilla Please and um, The Last Straw and Peachtree Street. Those are the four flavors uh, from Asbestos. Uh, Tetley Man says strawberry ice cream that is like strawberries and cream. Uh, pineapple upside down cake, yum, yum. Okay, Nilla Nuts, Pegasus Drops, pineapple ice cream. There's Bam Bam's favorites. Pegasus Drops is like a chocolate milk. Kind of maybe some cake thrown in there too, cake and cream and milk. Um, or cake and cream and just kind of chocolatey yum. Appeared on the TV show Record Breakers almost every other week at one point. Cool. Uh, melon baller. Melon baller is definitely a nectar of the gods if you like fruit. 
<laughs> uh, melon baller is, what's in that one? Peach, cantaloupe, and watermelon. Oh, so good. So good. I'm a fruity vapor myself. I like it. Uh, definitely like those. Um, let's see. Where, oh, where did I go? Where did I miss one? Oh, PB&J Blackberry. Uh, David's put a lot of effort into our PB&J line. Uh, you can choose the J. So we, you can get you get peanut butter and jelly. So you got peanut butter and apple butter, peanut butter and uh, was it blackberry jam, peanut butter and blueberry jam, peanut butter and grape jelly, peanut butter and strawberry jam, peanut butter and raspberry jam, or our original peanut butter buster, which is peanut butter and banana. Oh, and Dolores had to do. It. Oh, I don't have that loaded. Ah, I have to make a new scene. Hang on. <laughs> I don't have that in here because it's a new machine. <laughs> Find it. Hey, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Oh, no, no, no. There we go. Ah, there we go. Peanut butter buster is my bitch. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh... So, yes, but PBJ Blackberry, nice D melon. Okay, uh, Sangria is one of my personal conquests. I'm very proud of the Sangria. Uh, I put a lot of work into that one. Um, oh, Bam Bam did it again. Look at that. I'm going to have to do it again. All right. Peanut Butter Foster is my bitch. Okay, uh, Lemon Twinkle, uh, okay, oh, in no particular, FF Stoken says, Bear Buns, that is a non-glazed cinnamon bun. Uh, Peachtree Street is peach and strawberry custard. Strawberry Buster is strawberry and banana custard. Knickerbocker Glory is a British dessert that is made with mixed berries and meringue. Uh, Gwen's Fluffermint, as I said, is a, a marshmallow and peppermint. Nilla Nuts is a hazelnut custard. Uh, lemon Twinkle is an lemon angel food cake with whipped cream topping. Aries Ram is, actually Aries Ram is sort of like Wadabewi 2.0. That's what uh, Aries likes to call it. Uh, Wadabewi came about, I don't know, about a year and a half ago. Uh, somebody said, hey, make a watermelon strawberry kiwi mix. I said, okay. And I made one. Came out pretty tasty. And uh, Aries loved that one. He says, no, I think we can improve on it. Okay, so we, we threw in a little raspberry, and then we threw in some vanilla, which kind of gives it some magic, uh, because the flavors change as the wattage goes up and down. The vanilla kind of causes the flavors to change depending on the wattage, which makes it makes it a little magical. Um, so you've got PB&J Blackberry. I'm trying out. Oh, are you the one that... Okay, I totally remember that order now, uh, because... I thought it was pretty cool that you took the plunge and got a 120. Um, it's a very strong tobacco, but it is, I mean, we, that one was David's idea, actually. The the kind of way we tweaked, we tweaked the tobacco flavor a little bit, give it a little bit of a sweetness, a little bit of a burnt taste. Um, hopefully you will love it. Uh, let's see, Aries Ram is very nice. And that reminds me, you need to order more, yay. <laughs> You can still use the coupon code too. See this right here? You can still use uh, the coupon code 2017 to get 25% off your order. Uh, that is good through tomorrow night at midnight Eastern time. So the sale is going to end a little bit early for you guys. It'll end, over there in the UK, it'll end at 7 at night tomorrow night. Is that right? No. No, it goes later. It ends at five in the morning for you guys. It ends earlier for people on the West Coast over here. So, um, yeah, it'll end at yeah 9 p.m. for you people over on the West Coast. It'll end at five in the morning for you people in the UK. So, uh, yeah, um, you can 25% off your order. That is our New Year's sale. If you're having trouble vaping, if you're having trouble keeping vaping, or, you know, any of those things, we want, we want to help you keep vaping. 
Yay! That's awesome! Woohoo! Uh, you know, <laughs> do any of you, it was you that ordered the red, well, as I said, I, 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 I totally remember making that now because I thought you made a, uh, it was a, it was cool that you took the plunge and got the big bottle instead of trying out the little bottle first, but I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I, it, I think you'll like it. If you like tobaccos, I think you'll like it. So, um, I was going to say, so you guys, do you guys like, do you guys watch the weather? Did y'all see, have y'all seen the way people panic? People panicked here in Georgia because there was a threat of snow. Now, here's what happened. David and I had this discussion this morning or last night. Um, yeah, last night. Because uh, I, uh, many years ago, how many years ago now? Almost 10. Whoa. It was. It was like, yeah, like in April. It'll be 10 years ago I did this. Um, I went to Las Vegas, Nevada, and I was, I worked on a television show. I was the model coordinator uh, for a reality TV show. I know, right? <laughs> Well, you guys are going to love this story, okay? This is, it's like I said, Jen's story time, okay? I, um, I worked on this uh, TV show, a reality, I hate reality TV, but I ended up getting this, uh, this gig where I, I had to, was a model coordinator. Um, it was a reality TV show where it was sort of like America's Next Top Model, and um, they were competing. There were uh, 10, 20 photographers and 20 models, and they were all working together each each photographer had to photograph each model and then they turned in pictures and then um basically you know you chose winners at the end and we did all this filming over the course of like three days i mean it was a whirlwind woo -hoo -hoo. and you live in utah they really suck here <laughs> nice it's snowing right now here in godrick ontario uh no i would not dolores okay but um, the reason I brought this up actually is because uh, one of the makeup artists that I worked with um, on that TV show, um, and can uh, and and is this show viewable? Um, I have no idea whether or not you can find it. It was called Best of the Best Three because the guy who produced it, not produced it, the guy who whose idea it was, whose show it was, is, is a friend of mine. His name is Rick Hughes. And I think he did it for five years in a row. But it was on um, MAV TV. They aired it on a, a cable channel called MAV, M-A-V TV. And uh, I, I have DVDs of it. I, mean, I don't know, maybe someday I'll have to, I'll have to play it for you guys. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but anyway, there was like nine, I think nine episodes um, to the season. And it was basically, like I said, we did all this filming inside of like three days and uh, uh, they managed to stretch it out over the course of an entire season. One of the makeup artists I worked with there, her name was uh, Rashida Williams and um, she likes to go by the Glam Doctor. And uh, I, I'm not sure exactly where she's from. I think I wanna say she's from like the Chicago area, uh, possibly Michigan. Somewhere, somewhere up there, up north, right? Um, and she is doing very well, and she decided to branch out. And I don't know if she's opened up a chain or exactly what, but she's, she's decided to do something here in Atlanta. She's got something going on that's got her name on it, the Glam Doctor. With a name like that, she's from, from Chicago. I, I, I don't know. I'd have to go and look, look her up. I'm not sure. Um, but she was there I'm because I met her in Las Vegas. I have no idea where she was from. And we had models and makeup artists and photographers from literally all over the country um, that came to, to do this contest. I mean, it was a pretty sweet prize. I mean, the model that won and the photographer that won, I think they got like a $10,000 prize. So, I mean, it was definitely worth it. Anyway, um, so she she's recently decided to start doing something here in Atlanta. So she flew down here to Atlanta recently. I'm following her Facebook page, and um, she posted um, today's what today's Saturday. She posted this I think Thursday night. 
or yesterday. Nothing was yesterday. She posted. She goes, my flight has been canceled because of two to four inches of snow. Her flight home. She was here in Atlanta. She's flying home. Her flight got canceled. And, uh, and, and of course, she was kind of laughing about it. So I, that's what makes me think she's from Chicago because she's used to snow. <laughs> I said, no, no, no. Correction. Your flight was not canceled because of two to four inches of snow. Your flight was canceled because of the mere threat of two to four inches of snow. Of snow. Welcome to Atlanta. We'd be crazy like that. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> which she, of course, laughed and liked the po liked my comment, and so did several of her other people liked her liked my comment. Um, but here's the reason. So, and I said something to David. I was like, you know, this is so crazy. I got this girl. She's like, my flight got canceled because of snow. She says, you know what happened? All right, here's what happened. Um, 2010, I believe it was. It might have been 2011. It might, it might have been 2011. Um, we got hit. We got hit with a huge snowstorm, okay? And the kind of snowstorm that Atlanta has never seen, at least not, I mean, I've been here my whole life. I'm 43 years old, okay? I've never seen a snowstorm like this before or since. Um, it never happens, all right? Um, we get snow, and I mean, we can get a lot of snow sometimes. Usually it's an inch or two, it's not much. Every once in a while it hits us and we get like a foot, okay? It, 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 it really does happen, I promise, okay? But here's the thing, it almost always, and I mean, and I'm telling you, when I say almost always, I literally mean always except this one time, okay? <laughs> always except for one time ever, we get a lot of snow, and then it warms up the next day, and the snow melts, okay? It never stays around for more than a day. Two tops, all right? Um, we had, I remember back in 90... Nine. We had an ice storm, um, and I think it lasted. It wasn't snow; it was ice, and it, it may have lasted three days because it didn't warm up right away. I I rem I got knocked out. My power got knocked out for five days. I was about ready to. I was ready to pitch a fit at that point. I mean, like I couldn't handle it. Everybody else was getting their power back on. I mean, it started out like the first day they reported, they said, oh, two million people are without power. And then the next day I was like, oh, one million people are still without power. And the next day it was, oh, 500,000 are still without power. And I was among the last 50,000 people to get their power turned back on. Okay. Like the whole world was just moving on without me and I'm stuck in the dark ages. I wasn't even able to like, I mean, I, mean, I literally went to work one day and, and realized I had put on two different socks. I had a blue sock and a black sock on because I couldn't see to my color of my socks in my house you know I had to like wear hats because I couldn't run my hair dryer um, it was crazy it was just stupid crazy um, but anyway um, Atlanta's just not prepared for this okay we, we don't have the equipment there's no reason to keep the equipment around because it doesn't get used um, you know there's no reason to spend the money on the equipment um, so what happened in 2011 was it snowed and it snowed a lot like I think a good six to eight inches and it did not warm up. It stayed cold. So the snow refroze the next day. And then it snowed again, like another five or six inches. Okay. I mean, there, were, there was a good foot, foot and a half of snow outside that had refrozen on top of itself. All right. Um, this was literally the snowpocalypse of Atlanta. The entire city was shut down for five days. The airport was shut down. The roads were shut down. Um, the traffic was so bad. People were in a panic because this, the storm hit so quick and so hard. Everybody ran home, right? They left their jobs. They left their whatever they were doing to go home. And the traffic was so bad on the interstates that people literally ran out of gas sitting in traffic. Okay, they, they couldn't move. All right. There were cars abandoned on the, on the roadways everywhere. There were, it was, it was mass panic. It was just, just, hi, Leah, how are you? Um, so RS said you had 50 inches. You had 50 inches that year. Okay. Um, it was, it was crazy. I mean, there was, there was a good, like I said, there was a good foot and a half. My, it might've even been two feet of snow um, that was here, but what had happened was it had snowed and it refroze 
and then it snowed again on top of it and refroze on top of that. Now, now up north, I know you guys are used to this. I know you guys deal with this every year, okay? You guys have the snow trucks, you have the salt trucks, you have the plows, you have, you guys have the equipment. People keep the clothing in their closets to handle that kind of weather. Um, we don't have that shit down here. We just don't. Um, so it was mass pandemonium, okay? Um, like I said, uh, people had to abandon their cars on the interstate. Um, they had to walk home. Uh, it took people eight, 10 hours to get home that day that, that, that it hit. And then the, the entire city was a ghost town, all right? I actually, I was home. I, I didn't have a job at the time. I'd, I'd lost my job and I'd been on unemployment for a long time. So I sat at home. I sat at home for three days. I was kind of going stir crazy. I called up a friend of mine and he was like, look, He's like, you need to get out of the house. There's nobody on the roads. He's like, just, it's one o'clock in the morning. He's like, just, just take your time, drive 20 miles an hour, just come down and see me. He's like, you, you're getting stir crazy. You need to get out of the house. I was like, all right. And I did. I drove down there to 20 miles an hour like this. Um, and there were, there were cars abandoned all over the interstate. Um, the, the snow drifts had come in and, and narrowed the interstate down to like, it, it's like eight lanes or seven or eight lanes where I live um, on one side, seven or eight lanes on both sides. There's like 16 lanes across, but it, the snow had narrowed it down to about three or four lanes. It's just insane. Absolutely insane. Um, <clears throat> and David was like, so the, my point of the story is that I was, I was telling him, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that her flight got canceled for the mere threat of two to four inches of snow. He says, you know why this happened? Because... He said, you remember when the snowpocalypse happened back in 2011? Yeah. You know who got blamed for that? God. <laughs> I mean, who else are you going to blame for that? God. I mean, what do you mean who got blamed for it? He said, no. The governor and the mayor were blamed for not being prepared. All right. Being prepared for what? What are you going to prepare for? That's like. What, you're going to prepare for an earthquake? You know, they don't happen here, but they might. Actually, that's not true. They do happen here every once in a while. But, you know, what are you going to prepare for? But apparently the governor and the mayor got blamed for this. And so now they're overly precautious. Okay. Our governor declared a state of emergency in the state of Georgia yesterday. <laughs> We were on a we were in a state of emergency uh, up until four o'clock this afternoon. Uh, there was a state of emergency here in Georgia. You want to know how much snow I actually I walked out this morning. <laughs> I walked out of my house to come to Higgy Six and I went, "Oh my God! There's an icicle on my car! Call the, call the paramedics! Call the roadside assistance! There's an icicle on my car!" <laughs> there was there was like three little icicles hanging off the front of my car. Um, not a lick of ice on the roads at all. Uh, a few areas of grass that were still in shadow, like from trees, had a little light dusting of snow on it. Um, my brother, my brother called me up and he said, uh, are you, he asked me, he called me up. I wasn't here yet. He said, are you at work yet? I said, no. He said, um, oh, he goes, well, the Bank of America by my house is closed and I'm going to come out and I want to come out and go to the Bank of America by Higgy Sigs. And uh, I just wanted to know if it was open yet or if it was open. And I told him, I said, I wasn't, I wasn't there, so I couldn't tell him. Um, but I was like, you be careful driving out there now. He's like, I know, right? I hit whole two feet of snow or two feet of ice on the road about a mile back. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. Do your orders go up when it snows or do you get, actually, it's, been a little, it's got a little slow, Simon. I mean, um, it was really busy earlier this week and it got a little snow, a little, a little slow. Here in the UK, we call it the nanny state. Kids are not allowed to have snowball fights in case they get, oh, come on, Storm. Don't take snowball fights away from kids. Really? Is that, is that real? Oh, come on. You can't take snowball fights away from kids. I, I don't think you could do it if you tried. The only reason you took snowball fights away from the kids today is because there was no fucking snow on the ground. <laughs> there was, like, none. Okay? It looked... It's terrible. No snow whatsoever. I didn't see a lick of ice. 
I did. I saw, like I said, I walked out. I saw like three little icicles hanging off the front of my car. Oh my God. Call up, call FEMA. I have icicles hanging off my car. <laughs> yeah, everybody got out early. Uh, schools let out early yesterday. It wasn't even snowing yet, right? Schools let out early because we were in a state of emergency. Um, we, I took Pepper. I took my dog. I carried. I was gonna sound terrible. I carried my dead dog in my arms to the pet crematorium yesterday. And I said, how long does it usually take? She said, well, usually 24 to 48 hours, but we're going home early today, so we probably won't call you till Monday. Yeah? Okay. So I don't, I don't get pepper back until Monday. Well, I can't. I, was, I mean, <laughs> you got eight inches of snow so far today, and it's still snowing. Not a fucking flake out there, okay? What little bit fell, there was like, I, you can't even measure what was out there, okay? It didn't even fully cover the ground. All right, there was a sprinkling. It looked like a cocaine factory exploded all over the grass. That's, that's literally what happened. Uh, well, I said literally. No, it was figuratively what happened. The GSFA meeting is now public. I thought it was always public, baby. I mean, they canceled school for my kids yesterday. It was 20 below or 20 below outside and their heater couldn't queue up. Okay, that I get, Axel. That I get. It's 20 below outside. The heater's not keeping up or they didn't turn the heaters on in time, whatever. I get it. David. How is it not public? We have been, we already began advertising that we were going to broadcast, excuse me, we we're going to broadcast it live. Is it, so saying at noon? Are you saying that the part that starts at noon is now public or just the part that starts at 1.30? Because that was always public. I put it in my flyer. I designed it. <laughs> I designed it that way. Uh, talk to me. Um, you guys should know this. That was always that way. I put it in my flyer that way. That's what you told me. That was in the notes. I already we I already knew this. Oh. All right. I'm gonna put up another picture for you guys. And I'm gonna tell you guys what's gonna happen here in what's today? Today is the seventh. What's gonna happen in two weeks? two weeks in a day because it's going to be on Sunday, okay? Um, let me get this up. Um, your normal Trenches Funny Farm will not be airing um, on January 22nd. Yeah, you can't really see that. Okay. Um, this is not cast friendly. Okay. Uh, so what, what I've got here going on is a poster, another poster I designed, uh, for the Georgia Smoke Free Association. All right. Uh, pushy, pushy. I know, right? He is so pushy. And uh, what, oh, what did he type? What did he typo? Damn, I missed it. What did you typo? <laughs> All right, will you keep Pepper at home or bury his cremains on your property? Um, I bought a little urn. Actually, I bought it on Amazon as we were driving to the crematorium. I got on my phone and I bought a little cherry wood box that I could put a picture in the front of it. So yeah, we're gonna keep it. It went pubic, uh, okay. He said the meeting is now pubic, pu pubic. You know what? He didn't typo that. He says that shit all the time. Thank you, Carrie. Hugs back to you. Mwah. Okay. Jazzy, our very own Jazzy Jag, has graciously given up 30 minutes of his time slot on Sunday, January 22nd. And Valandar has given up his time slot uh, on January 22nd. 
we are going to be broadcasting live. Okay, we are having a semi-annual members meeting here in Georgia for the Georgia Smoke Free Association. And we are gonna have a slew of um, really big names that are gonna be here to talk to everybody, okay? Uh, we got Greg Connolly from the American Vaping Association or AVA, uh, I-E, AVA. I uh, see what I did there, RS. Um, we have Dimitris Agrafiotis, um, who is the uh, a chairman of Sevia USA and the director of the TSFA, uh, the Tennessee Smoke Free Association. Uh, we have, I can't even read that myself, Lauren Freilich, I think is her name. Uh, she is actually with the lobbyist group that um, the GSFA has hired. Uh, the lobby group is called uh, Georgia Link. And um, they are uh, basically lobbyists for hire. Um, they've, they've been working with us for a long time now, and they've done some really wonderful stuff. For those of you who do not know, um, the Indiana vaping legislation came to Georgia at one point, about a year ago, I think. And um, we stopped it. The GSFA stopped it, and the Georgia Link, uh, they all stepped in, and they, they stopped it. Um, so, you know, they're, they're doing their job. Um, ew, I can't read it. Um, I got to pull up. Let me see if I can open up my program. Ha -ha. I'll open up my program and I'll, I'll pull it up. Although it's probably going to cover up something. Ha! Ooh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do something different. Hang on. Nope. Nope. Oh, no, wait. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. We only need the top part. You can do that in next split. I can? Ooh, I know what I can do. Okay. I'll do it this way. There we go. <laughs> Let's see if I can make that bigger. Okay, so uh, yeah, Lauren Freilich, uh, she's one of the um, uh, the lobbyists from Georgia Link. We also have John Bozeman, who is also, uh, he's a managing partner, or managing director at Georgia Link. And then we have uh, Jake Butcher, who is the state that he's new, he just got hired as uh, the uh, Vapor Technology Association, or VTA, he is the new state affairs manager. So he's kind of in charge of kind of keeping tabs on what's going on state by state. Um, he's going to be there too. We've got um, uh, the Georgia Smoke Free Association, of course. I hope that all the members can be there. Uh, Bill Funderburk is our president. Jason Wells is our vice president. Uh, John O'Connor is our treasurer. Uh, we have Chad Freed, Jeff Johnson, David Higginbotham, and Wesley Swanson. You may know Wesley from um, Bulldog Vapor. Yum, yum. Okay. Uh, the meeting is open from 1.30 on to all. Um, so are they a bit like having Batman or other superheroes for hire? <laughs> a little bit, Simon. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, the, what lobbyists do, lobbyists' job, a lobbyist's job, is basically to nurture and cultivate relationships with politicians, okay? Um, and they do it with a lot of politicians, okay? And so when they're hired to lobby for a certain cause or group or, or situation, um, they call on these relationships that they've cultivated with these politicians to basically get their way, all right? Now, most of us have jobs and, you know, that we do on a day in and day out basis. We just don't have the time or the energy or even the motivation to rub elbows with these politicians on a daily basis so that we can have our voices heard. And that's what the lobbyists do, okay? They, they are a part of these politicians' lives. And therefore, when they say, hey, I have a situation here that I think you should listen to, the politician says, hey, well, you know what? I like this person, so I'm going to listen to what they have to say, all right? You could walk into Yes, I will be broadcasting on VU Live at 1.30. Oh, thank you, Fire Owl. Good night, sweetheart. Um, 
So, you know, but you now if you walked into your local politician's office and you said, hey, I have a situation here that I really think you should listen to. They're going to be like, um, I don't have time for you. I'm busy. Talk to my admin or send me a letter or something. You know, leave me your information. OK. Um, and, you know, you might get heard. You might not. You never know. OK. But the lobbyists, like I said, the lobbyists situate themselves into these people's lives so that when it comes time to be heard, you actually get heard, okay? And that's that's what they do. That's their job. That's what you pay them for. You pay them for the connections that they've made in our political system. Um, is it a great system? I mean, you know, do you have to depend on lobbyists just to get your point across, especially whenever it's something that we all believe in is a good thing? Yeah, that kind of sucks. But is taking advantage of the work that they've put into cultivating relationships with politicians worth the money? Probably, you know? Um, it's just kind of really all perspective and how you look at it. Um, so anyway, uh, January 22nd, 2017, uh, we will be at the Vaporite Labs or VR Labs uh, warehouse over in Marietta, Georgia. Um, we're going to start the meeting at 12 o'clock. It's kind of a members only thing uh, for the first hour and a half. And then after that, we're opening it up to the public. There's going to be free food, free beer, free drinks, and uh, um, we'll be broadcasting it. I'll be broadcasting it um, here on VU Live uh, for as long as the meeting takes. And uh, we will have, uh, like I said, we're going to have Greg Connolly, uh, Demetrius. I know you guys all know Greg and you all know uh, Demetrius. Um, you haven't met Lauren, John, and Jake, um, but you will be meeting them here in about two weeks. Hello, Joshua Vapes. Um, so that was another announcement I have to say. Oh, hi, Sammy Joe. Uh, I actually call them every day until I get them on the phone. <laughs> so good back for congressmen. But each of mine know my name as well as my voice, staffers and congressmen. See, that's awesome. Raven, that's awesome, uh, or Sammy Joe, whichever you prefer. It's, um, I, I mean, I love that, and I wish I had the time to do that. Um, but you know, I, I, I get a little busy because I like to make y'all's juice and get it out to you as quick as possible. <laughs> well, wait a minute, RS. If you can book the flight. To, maybe if you book the flight to come down here for that, you could stay a couple more days and come to a billion lives. We got free food and champagne on a billion lives night. Come on. We're waiting for it. Just come on. See what, see, see, we could work with you on this. Come for the meeting, stay for a billion lives, and then you can go home. See? There's a solution to every problem. I wish you could too, uh, Raven. Absolutely, that would be awesome. Um, I would love to meet you. And David has a point, you know, all of those big dogs out there that we're fighting against, you know, big, big, big pharma, big tobacco, big, gov well, not big government, because we are talking about big government, but all those people that we're, we're fighting against, they use lobbyists they see the importance of hiring somebody who has probably spent years working on their relationships with the local politicians, okay? Um, you've got lobbyists everywhere, okay? The lobbyists that we have are local lobbyists. They're Georgia lobbyists, and they deal with Georgia legislation. Um, but, you know, you've got probably dozens, hundreds, maybe even thousands of different lobbyist firms in DC of people who that's all they do is they get to know the politicians, the congressmen, senators, governors, just all of them. And they lobby their cause, whatever cause they're hired to lobby for, you know, and the politicians listen to them. So it's an easy way for them to listen to a bunch of different viewpoints from one person rather than listen to 80 different viewpoints from 80 different people. You would just be like, ah.
climbing back in my chair was wondering if you'd catch that. <laughs> so I'm saying, RS, if you can afford the flight for free beer, certainly you could afford the flight to stay for a couple extra days and get free champagne. Just saying. Graham said to be that squeaking, squawking wheel until they listen. So you worry the hell out of them until they hear you and actually respond. I, you know, I like that, Raven. I like that. Oh, thank you, Dolores. Yes, if you're enjoying the show, please click the thumbs up button down below. Uh, make sure you subscribe to VU Live so you always get a notification whenever the channel goes live. If you actually know, you have to subscribe and you have to make sure that the bell, there's like, they don't have it on the gaming site yet, just so you know. You don't see the bell if you're on the gaming side where, where everything's dark. But if you go back to the white backgrounds, there's the subscribe button. There's a little bell. And if you click that bell, the bell gets little lines around it like it's ringing. That way you get notifications when the channel goes live. Is that like meet, greet, and eat? No, no, no. Yeah, that's the, that, get, get your story straight, RS. That's the Waffle House. We meet, greet, and eat at the Waffle House. You guys are never going to let me live that one down, ever. <laughs> lobbyists have a I, yeah, they do have a bad name. Because they're politicians. I mean, really, lobbyists are politicians. They're like the liaison between politicians and whoever, you know. So, yeah, they do have a, a director at the VA years ago when I walked in his office with my guide dog. Because I couldn't get how far his dad is. First order. So, you're the one who brought this shit storm on my head. <laughs> That was me. <laughs> okay. He laughed and said this, go take care of your dad. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, shit. Your sides hurt because you fell off your chair? Is that why? <laughs> well, hey, David, it worked for Bill Clinton. Why wouldn't it work for lobbyists? I'm just saying. <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh. Foggy Ohms Vapor Lounge. Hey, what's up? But it it does work, Dolores. That's the thing. It does. Because the lobbyists do it. They take the time. You know, most of us don't have the time or the inclination to schmooze that much. I certainly wouldn't. I would get tired of it after a while. I mean, I could not possibly kiss that much ass and still go to sleep at night. I, it, it takes a certain personality to be able to do that. Okay, there is a um, there is a book. Uh, we do have a cute lobbyist. Uh, the girl, she's very cute. Um, but there is a book out there, and I and I, I think David read it. I told him to read it, or I I, I told him about it. It's, I know it's one of the best-selling books of all time kind of thing. I don't, I'm not sure exactly where it ranks, but it's uh, by Dale Carnegie, I think. And it's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I, I, I did, somebody, somebody gave me the book a long time ago and I read it. Um, and I didn't care for the book, okay? Because while the techniques in it would definitely work, there's no question in my mind that they would work. The fact of the matter is, is the book was a how-to manual on how to kiss ass, okay? And that's really what it boils down to. You learn how to kiss ass and you can get what you want, all right? I've tried to explain this to David's children and they don't get it, you know? If you want something out of me, kissing my ass is a great way to do it. But that's the way, I mean, yeah, and you're right, David, there's a bit more to it than that. But I mean, the gist of the book is is kissing ass, okay? And and, and it's not necessarily kissing ass in a creepy way. You know, it's it's all about talk about it, read it, I'm just an asshole, that works too. <laughs> 
the Karma Sutra, nice. Now, I mean, you know, it's all, you know, getting people to talk about themselves, learning how to listen, learning how to respond. You know, people like to talk about themselves. I mean, there's no question about it. People love to talk about themselves. Why do you think we sit on these casts? Okay, we sit on these casts because we like to talk about Higgy Sigs. We like to talk about what we're doing with our company because we're proud of our company and we want to share that with other people. Um, there's, a, there's a little ego involved. There's, there's got to be a little ego involved. Everybody has an ego. Lobbyists will definitely find the There's no question. Take the I'll have your job attitude. Oh. <laughs> I don't think that one attracts as many. I don't think that's the way you win friends and influence people uh, by intimidating them. Um, I mean, it might work in some situations, but you certainly don't earn respect that way. Thank you very much, Raven. I'm I'm very proud. We are very very proud of Higgy Six. I mean, we we literally started this company from nothing. And when I say nothing, I mean nothing. I mean David and I put together like four hundred dollars and invested in some product and just let it snowball from there. And it's taken us four years to get where we are, um, but we, we just never gave up because we believe in what we do. We believe in our product. We believe in vaping and we believe that vaping is saving lives. Um, so that has always helped us keep our focus where it needed to be. Uh, vaping is a lifesaver. Uh, vaping does miracle things, things that aren't supposed to be curable. You know, we've seen report and report. Thank you, Tetley man. Um, we are, thank you so much. <laughs> um, but it's like, you know, COPD is not supposed to be curable. It is a condition that develops and it's a permanent condition. It's something you have to deal with for the rest of your life. And here we are watching dozens, possibly hundreds of people who have COPD that are literally reversing the effects, reversing the condition by vaping. How awesome is that? Okay, that's not supposed to be a reversible condition. Um, and, and you know, so we believe in it and, and it helps us to keep our focus and keep going and to keep trying and keep doing as much as we can to make sure that Higgy Sig survives. Uh, and so that's, you know, it's, it helps. It helps when you feel you're really making a difference. And we do. We feel like we're making a difference in the world, and it it's, it's a beautiful feeling. You guys are the awesome ones because you guys have made it happen. See, I'm gonna get all mushy again. I'm just kind of feeling like a big, big mush ball today with pepper and and uh, losing pepper and and being so proud of my company. So, oh, so I hope you start handing out RX 300s. Have you? Okay, anybody in here? have let me wait, catch up on the reading dying of cancer smoked for 60 years could not quit like uh, how could you uh, how could you have cancer and not quit smoking <laughs> i have four autoimmune diseases haven't had chronic or regular bronchitis since june 2009 all nine of my doctors and specialists are pro vaping yes okay i used to brag that i haven't had the flu in five years I broke that record a couple months ago because it did come down with the flu. Um, but one time in five years, I've had the flu. How awesome is that, right? Yes, Pepper. I'm sorry, Raven. Um, hi, Nate. Uh, you you did come in here a little bit uh, late. Um, we lost our beloved Chihuahua Pepper yesterday. He passed away peacefully at home. Um, I woke, I woke up to give him his heart medication and, and found he had, he had passed away in his sleep. Thank you, Train. I appreciate that. Um, it's been, uh, it's been a, a hard road. Um, and it just started cause it just happened yesterday. Um, but yes, he was almost 17 or he was going on 17 and he was, he would have been 17 this summer. Uh, and, uh, we're, we're handling that. Uh, but I promised myself I was not going to cry on a live cast today, so I'm not going to cry. Um, I remember you telling me that. Absolutely. I remember you telling me that you lost your guide dog. I can't even imagine. A guide dog is so much more than family, though. You know, a guide dog is, is your eyes, you know? I mean, not only is he a pet and not only is he part of the family, but not only... It, but he's like your eyes. I mean, he's, oh, a guide dog, I think, would be even harder than, than, than a, 
a pet than a, than a dog, than a regular dog, really. Um, yeah, that's, that's crazy. I, and I am, I am, I just, uh, I'm just not gonna, I just don't want to cry in front of a bunch of people. <laughs> just, I'm not a crier. <laughs> I don't like it. Um, but that's okay. Yeah, I know he's your eyes, your best friend, family. I can't even imagine Raven like that, that I think a guide dog would definitely be worse than losing, a, a, a you know, a, a, any other dog. It just, wow. I was told that I still have PTSD and should consider vaping CBD by my pharmacist. Simon, I think that's an excellent idea. Um, I've been hearing tons. I, I've never tried it myself, but I've tons and tons and tons of awesome things about CBD. I, I say go for it. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it, it doesn't get you high. Guys, just so you know, CBD does not get you high. It chills you out. Okay. If you have PTSD, you're going to have anxiety attacks and panic attacks. Um, CBD will chill you out. All right. And I think that that's awesome. Yes. Uh, Pepper was 16 and a half years old. He was a Chihuahua. <clears throat> so he was, he was our baby. He was our buddy. Um, Oh, RS, I know. I love, have any of y'all out there met RS in person? First of all, RS has the epic handlebar mustache, which is so cool. You know, he like twists the mustache up like this, all right? And he has a wonderful wife um, who's very sweet and they have a wonderful, I mean, like seriously, when you see these two, relationship goals right there, seriously. That this is what everybody, everybody wants in a relationship is the marriage that RS and his wife have, which is awesome. Nitro is cussing at his coils. Nitro, I was talking to you earlier. Did you see that? Are you going to come to our Billion Lives event? I believe you were not. Yeah, you were not at the one in Kennesaw. So I'm thinking you have to come to this one. I invited you to it on Facebook. CBD is very expensive. It's pretty expensive here too. It's like a little teeny tiny bottle, like a little 15 mil bottle is like 80 bucks or something. It's, it's pretty expensive. He don't read chat. I did. I said it out loud. January 26th. Here, let me get the link so you can buy a ticket or several. Please do buy January 26th at the Studio Movie Grill in Duluth. You, Rhino, no, not 10 days, 20 days, 19 days. No, 26, today's the 7th, Nate. <laughs> January 26th, 19 days. Um, you and Ryan and Obs and anybody else that you can think of, invite people to come, buy tickets for them. You have to work. Come on, Nitro. This is a billion lives. Have you seen it yet? I mean, it's important. Still, you need to tell you need it to be the 17th. <laughs> no. <laughs> if it was the 17th, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> Oh, it is. It's already past midnight in the UK. Well, it's only 7.43 at night uh, here in the US, or at least on the East Coast it is. I'm in Atlanta. So make sure you tell Ryan. Uh, make sure you tell Obs. Uh, make sure you tell everybody. I know you got contacts, Walter. I'm calling, see, you know it's serious. I'm calling him by his first name. Walter, I know you have contacts. You need to help us out, please. I haven't, but I have a weird standpoint on it. I don't think vapor should watch a billion lives. I think people who don't know about the benefits of vaping should watch it. Yes, but we got to get the vapors to bring those people with them. Okay. See, you see my point. You see where you see where I'm going with this. The vapors have to bring those people to the event. <clears throat> But 
I know you have contacts, so help us out. It, you're right, Dolores. Showing the film to vapors is preaching to the choir. All right, I'm I'm totally with you. But getting non vapors to see the movie without the vapors kind of like being like, dude, you got to see this. You know, like you need the vapors to pull them in. Thank you, Nitro. Um, do you need the link again? I will give you the link again. Um, also, Nitro, uh, there's a GSFA meeting on uh, January 22nd. Are you working then? Will you be working on, do you work Sundays? My DHU hated smoking, accepted vaping, has gone so far as to offer to learn to build coils for you if you need it. Nice. He's changed for the better and has two brothers vape and then quit completely. Yes. Yeah, we need a little bit. We need to kind of, you know, I mean, don't necessarily need to drag him kicking and screaming. I work every day. That's not Friday or Saturday. Um, it's over at the Vaporite uh, Warehouse, Vaporite Labs in Marietta. At, well, the meeting, the members, are you a member? You're just FA member? Um, if you're a member, the meeting starts at 12. And um, the the, the, uh, the public, open to the public part, starts at 1.30. And we're going to be casting it, too, so it'll be archived and anybody can watch it. Because we're going to have a lot of great guest speakers. We're going to have Greg Connolly, uh, Dimitris Agrafiotis. Um, we're going to have uh, Lauren Freilich and John Bozeman from the Georgia Link, uh, the lobbyist group that the GSFA has hired. And um, also Jake Butcher from VTA. He's the state affairs manager. They're all going to be there. The advocacy panel will be there to answer questions, address concerns, and discuss the future plans of the GSFA and the vaping industry. So it's, it's a very important, um, very important meeting. And if you can make, I know you said it's not, it's not Saturday, Sunday. It's, a, or, it's not a Friday or Saturday. It is a Sunday, but it's very, very important. So if you can't make a billion lives, maybe you could make that. I thought Duluth only sold products on late night infomercials. <laughs> Duluth is a city. <laughs> the city here. That is awesome, Raven. I mean, how? I'm a little. I'm a little flabbergasted that you I mean I mean I hope I'm not overstepping my bounds here but guys Raven is blind <laughs> okay um and she's building coils she's been building coils for six or seven months that's amazing Ra I mean wow okay I'm not exactly sure how she interacts with these uh shows because I'm sure she's got one of those computers that talk to her. So she's like listening to me talk and listening to the chat, like speak at the same time. But that's amazing. Um, she can build, and she, she's blind. <laughs> okay, that's what she mentioned. She had a seeing eye dog because she's blind. <coughs> well, I know, but like you have a screen reader and then you have me talking. So they're probably talking over each other. And I don't know how you keep it all straight in your head. That's pretty amazing to me. That's like, wow, like my hat's off to you, lady. That's awesome. Right, Simon? That's amazeballs. <laughs> That's amazeballs. I, yeah, I have, I mean, I don't have great vision. I mean, I'm pretty blind, actually, but what <laughs> like that's awesome <laughs> uh, so, I mean you'd have to learn how to tune in and tune around but that's still like that's a lot of information coming into your brain at one time me talking the screen reader talking like that's crazy
Yes, Nate, but <laughs> I was going to go there, but I can't. <laughs> Yeah, Nate, we don't need to hear about the voices in your head. <laughs> I think that's awesome, Raven. Okay, so new computer. Um, smooth cast today. Yay. When you had your guide dog, was it one bark for left and two for right? <laughs> I can only imagine how much uh, her guide dog spoke to her, really. I mean, I, guide dogs are amazing creatures. I'm mean, really, they're, they're, they're so well-trained and they, they do so much. Um, and they do, they learn, they totally learn to talk to their, their humans. I think it's cool. It was feeling through the harness handle. Yeah. Well, it's still. <laughs> you don't eat much. <laughs> Nate, you lie. Actually, Nate and I had this discussion. Uh, we Because for those of you who don't know, Nate actually works here. He is my lab assistant. And um, we were having this discussion just yesterday. Wait, was it yesterday? No, it wasn't yesterday. It was the day before yesterday. We were having this discussion yesterday or on Thursday about how difficult it is when you have a big family to feed them. I mean, it is a constant uphill battle just to keep food in the house, okay? When when you have a big family, it, I mean, me, you know, I've been single most of my life, okay? I mean, I, I've had, uh, I mean, I was married for seven years previously and I've been married to David now or we've been together for five years. But, you know, I mean, I've had, you know, up until I got married the first time, I, mean, I was basically single, and I was single for seven years in between marriages. Um, so I'm a, I'm a big, I'm big on cooking a, a lot, but then I'm real big on having leftovers, right? I have leftovers, and I can eat on those things. I eat on my leftovers for like a week, right? I love leftovers. I love the fact that it's already cooked. I can just throw it in the microwave, and, you know, I've, I've got a meal, right? When you have a big family, there's no such thing as leftovers. You can cook so much food and there's never any leftovers. They eat it all. Okay. <laughs> they eat it all. And Nate, I mean, Nate has, Nate has a big family. He's got a lot of kids. Um, his mom and his stepdad live there. And of course him and his wife. And I mean, there's like nine people living in that house. Okay. So they have a big family. They cook huge amounts of food and there's never any leftovers and, and seven dogs. Right. Um, you know, David has a big family. David's got four kids, you know, so there were times whenever I was cooking for six people, never any leftovers. And if you don't, I mean, like, and it's sort of pack mentality too, like, you know, with about seven dogs. I mean, if you don't get in there and get your food, there won't be any left for you. All right. So that you have that, that pack mentality gets in your brain and that's why you jump in and you grab all the food you can before everybody else does. Because, I mean, they're like vultures. <laughs> they really are. <laughs> and that, that's it. You know, it, it was it was constant, especially, you know, when we had when we had all four kids at the house. I mean, David was constantly running to the store. He spent so much money on food. I would spend all this time cooking and it would just be gone. Just gone. I mean, nothing left over. <laughs> you know, forget about taking something to lunch the next day. Gone. You know, and if you you've got to jump in and grab that shit up front. Yes, Raven. Nate has Nate had six dogs, um, but he came home to a seventh just the other just last week actually. I don't eat much food. Sometimes I have to throw things away because they start spilling. Well, that happens too, Niji. I mean, that totally happens, especially, you know, David and I spend a lot of time in Higgy Sig, so I don't have a lot of time to cook at home. But yeah, that, that can happen. But that never happened. When we had all the kids living there, oh my gosh, that never happened. I mean, unless it was just something the kids didn't like, then of course they wouldn't touch it and it would go bad. But yeah. 
<gasps> David sanitizing my playlist. When I say sanitizing, that means he's going through my playlist that had my songs on it that I like, and he's taking out all the ones that YouTube does not allow. So next week, we're going to have music. And now you have a full-blooded pit pup. Hey, wait. His name is Roscoe. <laughs> like, like from the Dukes of Hazard. Roscoe Pico Train. <laughs> um. Oh. Auntie will not be on tonight. So I might go a few minutes over here. Um, Because I don't feel like I'm done yet. I've missed you guys. Did I mention that? I have missed you guys. I've been off for two weeks. A lot's happened over the last two weeks. I feel like I've just been out of touch with you guys for like the longest time. And and I know it's only been, well, I guess it's been three weeks actually since I've seen you guys. Um, wait till I hear what he he did today. Oh no. I have totally missed you guys. I've had a lot of fun today. Um, so I'm probably going to stay on for a little bit longer. Auntie is unfortunately, um, his power went out. Um, he apparently did get some weather, um, whereas we did not. Uh, <laughs> we, we got none. <laughs> okay. Um, there was a meme. Where was that meme, David? You sent me a meme that was really funny. Or did you just show it to me with the one with the measuring tape? Did you send me that on Facebook? I'm going to show that one. That's funny. I have to show it to you on my... Uh... Offline mode. Hang on. Here we go. Uh -oh. I found it. I survived the blizzard of 2017. <laughs> Is uh, for um, uh, for Raven there. Oh shit! No, go back. It is a picture of um, a slightly snow dusted uh, ground with a measuring tape sitting on it. And I mean, the snow doesn't even cover the 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 metal tab at the end. And it says. I survived the blizzard of 2017. <laughs> I mean, it was like not even like not even enough to register on a measuring tape at all. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> uh, that white shit is all over our yard and porch. I can't get my wheelchair out the door. Well, well, apparently though, I see Auntie lives up in um, Virginia, I think. Yeah, it is cold. It is pretty cold outside, but there is no snow. Nate, now Nate lives out a little away. Did you get any snow, Nate? Was there like anything on the ground? You know what, Jen, I have the same notification. Soon your phone went off two seconds. Mine went off and made me jump. <laughs> yeah, see, Nate says no either. And Nate lives kind of out in the country. Like, I, I don't, he's not that much nor further north than me. He's a bit he's a bit further north, but he lives out in the country where it'd be more prone to to be colder and snow and yet nothing nothing. Um, you know what? David called me up right before I started my cast, and he said, "Here, you want to use this on your cast today?" I didn't I didn't save the link. Um, I thought it was kind of silly at the time, but apparently there's an article running around <laughs> right now that said Gainesville police out looking uh, for the culprits who have stolen all their snow. <laughs> And Gainesville is a city um, that's about, I don't know, 30, 40 miles north of here. And uh, so if, if there was any snow on the ground, they, they would have gotten more than we did. But I said, yes, Gain oh, the Gainesville police posted that. They said, They're out looking for the culprits who stole all our snow. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I got enough mud that I made a snowman. Yeah, I want to see. Show me. Yes, your snow shovel, not the bullshit one. Uh, 
Okay, let's see what night they're put up. Yeah. Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna save this. Here we go. I'm gonna show you guys. This is, if you guys, I don't know if you clicked on the link or not, but I'm gonna show you anyway. This is hilarious. I can do that now. I have a new computer. I can do all kinds of crazy things, and it's okay. <laughs> Hi, Swag. Look, there's there's Nitro Snowman. That's how much snow he got. <laughs> so funny. Actually, you know what, Nitro? You're lying. You know how I know you're lying? Because that's not Georgia Red Clay. Um, oh, it is a snowman made out of mud. It is a snowman made out of mud with two sticks and dot, like white dots for the buttons and the face, a little carrot, and I don't know, some kind of white cap or something sitting on its head for a hat. Um, but that it looked like it was made from real mud of real dirt that's actually brown. And um, we do not have that here in Georgia. We have Georgia red clay, which is a red, very red dirt. We don't actually have real, real. we don't have brown dirt here. We have red dirt. Um, it's, I didn't know, I was like, in my, I was, I was like a teenager, I think, before I realized that dirt's not supposed to be red. <laughs> I had no idea. I mean, I've been other places, but it just never occurred to me to actually pay attention to their dirt. <laughs> I didn't know. Um, I thought dirt is supposed to be red. You know, J Swag, it did look a little bit like turds. Um, I'm not going to ask. I mean, you know, it's nitro. We don't. We just never know. You have red clay in central Arkansas too. Can we build a ship yet? <laughs> Ah, uh, all right. Somebody's setting off fireworks outside. So guess what I got? Guess what I got? I got, I got, insert right, insert right. Anybody want some coupon codes? You got brown grass? Do you want to build a poo man? <laughs> I got, um, I have coupon codes. Anybody want some coupon codes? I got, I got a few I could give away. I haven't given away any coupon codes in two weeks, three weeks. Coupon, I know, three dog is back. Three dog is back so we can say coupons again. You need money first. Well, you know, we do have the sampler packs that are just a dollar. Um, you have your choice of uh, Higgy Juice or uh, sampler packs. You know, David, what I've, uh, I'm going to admit, David, I've been digging into your trivia tab and uh, doing trivia. Uh, we might be overlapping. I have no idea because, you know, when you do your shows on your own, I don't know what trivia questions you ask. Your mod broke. Oh, no. I always hated that too, Carrie. I get really wrinkled hands too. It's like, Ugh, I hate that. Ugh. They actually, they do actually cultivate, you know, <laughs> Nitro, when I first bought my house, this was like 20 years ago, I did the exact same question too. Which question was that? Oh, I mean, it doesn't matter, but that's funny, actually. Um, I didn't know that we were, I figured we were over overlapping. Yes, Raven does have a Higgy Six account. Absolutely. Um, what was I going to say? I totally lost my train of thought. I've been chit chatting for three hours straight. Oh, uh, but I do want to let you know, Auntie's not on tonight because his power's out, and he is. Um, 
he's hoping he has enough of a generator to keep his heat running. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of serious. Yes, crabgrass. That was it. Okay, so when I first bought my house 20 years ago, um, I was very young. I mean, it was 20 years ago, so I was like 23. Um, actually, I was 22. It was a long time ago. And I didn't really know what I was doing. And of course, I didn't really care because I was young and stupid. He forgot to pay the electric bill. <laughs> um, but what I did was um, I, I didn't I didn't really pay much attention to my grass. They had what they had done is they had they had done the front with um, Bermuda and they had done the back with fescue. OK, it's two different types of grass. Bermuda is a shorter, uh, thinner. Um, denser type of grass. Um, they use Bermuda a lot on, um, okay, sorry about that. Um, they, um, they use it on, um, yeah, well, Bermuda is a type of weed. There's no question about it. Well, grass in general is really, it's all a weed. Um, it's just nice looking weed. And, and fescue is, a um, is, fescue is one of those ones that's easy to maintain uh because it, it kind of grows fast and it grows green and um but it's not really that pretty um it's kind of chunky and kind of thick and and a little sparse um so and i didn't i didn't pay any attention to my grass like i, I really i put in like zero effort into it and i didn't care for it um i mean I, I just didn't care for it at all so i got a lot of weeds all right i mean a lot of weeds like a lot um, and I, I like for the first several months I lived at my house, I didn't even have a lawnmower, so I wasn't cutting it. You know, I had people coming over being like, hey, you want to cut your grass for you? Like, yeah, but it didn't matter if they cut it or not, because it was mostly weeds and weeds grow faster than grass. So like, I mean, you cut it and a day later, it had to be cut again. Uh, it, I mean, it's just terrible. Like my, my yard was just absolutely hideous. So I took my first um, tax return. I, I, I did my tax return. I got a big, huge refund, right? And I, um, I used the money to redo my yard. I called up a landscaping company and I said, because I'm a daddy's girl, I'm going to admit, I'm a total daddy's girl. And my daddy was kind of a Nazi about his yard, okay? He, he went through different types of grass and he... Um, he, he tried out different ones and, and finally he found the one... Um, that worked for everything, you know, it definitely worked for our weather. It likes hot weather. Um, it doesn't need a lot of water. It um, doesn't mind the shade. It doesn't mind the sun. Um, what, what he just finally landed on was zoysia. And he tried. He tried Kentucky bluegrass. He tried Bermuda. He, try, he tried them all. Okay, so he finally landed on uh, zoysia. And zoysia, it doesn't grow super fast. It tends to grow out, though. It'll it'll eventually choke out. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a very dense root system. So will Hickey's consider doing a CBG juice in the future? We have not talked about it, Simon. Um, I'm not saying never, but as of this point, no. Anyway, um, so zoysia, it doesn't grow up super fast, but it does tend to, has a very dense root system, so it doesn't allow weeds to grow up through it. Um, and it and it tends to grow out, too. It starts to kind of take over, it, you know, it, it's like ivy. It'll creep along the ground and get and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so uh, since, de since, my, since daddy, of course it was all, since daddy said zoysia was the best, um, that's what I wanted. I wanted zoysia. Um, so I went to a landscaping company. I said, you know, I have, look, I have all this money I want to spend. I want to redo my yard. And, uh, they came in and they said, all right. Uh, they gave me a quote. He says, let's put, uh, uh, he even, he talked me into upgrading it to put in a sprinkler system. I actually do have a spring. I never use it because we're usually in a drought here in the summertime anyway, and you can't water your yard. Um, so I do have a sprinkler system, but I, like I said, I never use it. Um, and he, uh, they came along, they tore up, but he, it was funny when he asked me, okay, bye Nate. Um, he had asked me when I first called him, he said, well, what kind of grass do you have right now? I went, crabgrass mostly, because <laughs> I did, I had crabgrass everywhere. Um, 
And they came in um, and they told me to better work with eliminating weeds, let the grass grow to approximately four inches before mowing because this allows the grass to choke the weeds naturally. Um, actually, you are correct. The problem with that raven is number one, when zoysia grows that thick, it is damn near impossible to get it to cut to cut it. It it's very the the base of the grass, the root system, and the base of it is so dense it will clog your mower. Um, you have to have a very powerful mower to mow the grass uh, when it when you do let it get out of control. The zoysia, uh, it's crazy. Uh, but yeah, crabgrass sucks. And because if you if you guys know what crabgrass looks like, it tends to grow out from a center point. Um, this way and so it, it it covers up stuff and it'll cover up whatever it, it whatever's in its way and it kills whatever's underneath it um, but yeah I had I had pretty much um, yes you have to have very sharp blades because uh, zoysia is very very thick uh, very very dense they use zoysia a lot on golf courses and um, but I do I have a, I have a full yard of uh, zoysia now whereas uh, my neighbors uh, I will I would imagine by now my neighbors probably have some, my, my next door neighbors at least have some zoysia because the zoysia is, you know, for the last 20 years has been creeping out um, from my yard and into theirs. <laughs> but, um, I do love the zoysia uh, and it, it, it sleeps in the wintertime and it greens up in the summertime. It doesn't need a lot of water to be green. It doesn't need it does, once it's established, it doesn't, you don't have to do anything to it. I mean, like David will tell you, we don't do, I don't do shit to my yard. I like, literally, I do nothing to my yard except have somebody cut it once every two weeks and that's it. Yeah, the zo well, the zoysia will, creeps along as well. It, it creeps along the ground and, and continues to grow out that way. Um, but crabgrass uh, starts at a center point and, and grows out like this. And as it grows out, it covers up anything in its path and then kills whatever's underneath it because whatever's underneath it then doesn't get water, it doesn't get sun, and it just kills it. Um, but the zoysia is so dense that it doesn't allow, like I, I have no crabgrass, like none in my yard at all anymore. And like I said, that's, I had a yard full of crabgrass 20 years ago. I mean, when I say full, I mean full. Okay. <laughs> it was bad. But I have no crabgrass anymore. Um, the crabgrass cannot grow in my yard because the zoysia is so thick. Oh my God, finally sitting, running since 9 a.m. Oh, not me, man. I was sleeping. I mowed ours till about 12 years ago until I ran into the deck and moved it two inches and dented my husband's previous cup of tea. It's only the start of the second season. Whoopsie! <laughs> Whoops! Oh, shit. <clears throat> All right, so how are we going to do this? We're going to try to just choose a winner. Or we're going to see if there's any. Oh, I'm going to start out this way. Are there any Higgy virgins in the room? Anybody who's never had Higgy juice? Oh, amen, Carrie. A -A amen. Nitro Bex, you lie. You lie, because I've given it to you myself. Not for a very long time. <laughs> Talking about sex with Higgy. Oh, okay. Apparently, Nitro doesn't hang around my shows very often because he would know what a Higgy Virgin is. And I think I can safely say, if we were talking about sex with Higgy, that the only person in this room who isn't a Higgy Virgin would be David. <laughs> Just saying. I don't know. Everybody's in the room. I suppose there might be somebody in the room who's had sex with me in the past. But I feel pretty secure in saying that the only person in the room that is not a Higgy Virgin would be David. A 
do your winner thing. Well, I was going to then ask who, hey, Brittany, I haven't had sex in seven months. That makes me ever, no, it doesn't. I'm sorry. If it doesn't work on girls, it doesn't work on guys either. Sorry. <laughs> How about anybody who has not had Higgies in, I, no, I'm not having you create a coupon code for that. <laughs> Y'all were waiting for who was going to break Jen. David did it. <laughs> okay. Okay, say who hasn't had Higgy Juice in six months? 40% off of me? Damn, RS. <laughs> How much am I worth? <laughs> 40% off of what? <laughs> Thomas J. I know, right? 40% off for a sample pack, sample pack of what? A $1 DR? Did what? what? <laughs> I'm only worth a dollar. <laughs> Thomas J. Guess what? You're a winner. You get to choose. Would you like? A 50% off code, that'd be 50% off your entire order, and or a $1 Higgy Signature Sampler Pack. What you get with a sampler pack is 10, no, three 10 mil bottles. You get three different flavors. You get to choose any nick level, any PGVG ratio. You can even choose your flavor intensity. We have over 100 flavors to choose from. Ah, 50% off. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Thomas J, I need you to go to this link in the room and fill out that form. Your coupon code will be emailed to you. So congratulations, Thomas. All right. So did anybody else say that they haven't had Higgies in over six months? Nitro, you would actually qualify for that. I know you. I know it's been more than six months since you had Higgies. So if you would like a coupon code, uh, go in like fuck making it rain pulls out rows of pennies. I'm gonna make it hail on this bitch. <laughs> Aw, I'm priceless. Aw, thank you guys are gonna make me cry. Okay, my plastic surgery. Oh, awesome! That's so cool, Carrie. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. So, Nitro, I'm stocked on juice. Give to someone that needs. See, Nitro is a good guy. But you're not stocked on Higgy juice. Just saying. Just saying. All right. Anybody else in the room who hasn't had Higgy juice in six months? I just get my, I, well, I don't blame you. I get more key lime ice cream every, every week. <laughs> I'm just, just saying. I love the key lime ice cream. It's so good. Was it? It was like two years ago, wasn't it, Nitro? That I met. Um, I met Nitro for the first time. Yeah, it was probably about two years ago. Uh, I met him up at the vape bar in Buford, and um, yeah, I let him try. I let him try what I was, and I was vaping on key lime ice cream then. So Dolores hasn't had, uh, Dolores is saying she hasn't had any Higgy Juice in six months, but she doesn't want to take a coupon. She wants to pee. Miha and the cat are playing? That's so good. Hi, Shorty. I know Case, lo Case likes the key, li key lime ice cream and the Higgy's pipe. Um, those are his favorites. Shorty likes the Nilla Nuts big time. Okay, I have to, I have to, okay, another, st more story time. Hi, girl. Uh, more story time here, okay. 
Miha loves cats. Okay, Miha thinks cats are, we do, we have a theory that Miha knew Pepper was dying and that's why she's been acting weird, okay? But when the cat got here, the, I mean, Zachary and Lexi moved in, I don't know, about two, two and a half months ago, I guess, okay? And the key lime ice cream is not new, Raven. It's been around for probably two, at least a year and a half, about a year and a half, maybe two years. It's, it's been around a while. It's all I vape. It's my all day vape. Um, but the cat, well, here's the thing. Okay. Miha loves cats. Okay. When you bring a cat around Miha, she thinks you've brought her a present. Okay. She follows you. If you're carrying the cat, she follows you around. She's just staring at the cat. She's like, Put it down, put it down, put it down. Let me play, let me play. Like she loves cats. She thinks cats are awesome, okay? Um, she lets the cat uh, bathe her. She bathes the cat. She mothers the cat. Um, when she was younger, before I got her, um, she was my best friend. Thank you, Shorty. I really appreciate that. Um, it's uh, uh, she, a kitten. Uh, there was a stray kitten that came to um, her house. This is my, my best friend, um, had Miha before me. And uh, Miha started lactating. Like, she wasn't pregnant. She started lactating and she nursed the kitten, okay? Uh, Miha loves cats, okay? And she is just obsessed. Well, this cat is a boy. Uh, the cat's name is Oink. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the cat's name is Oink. I like to call him Slinky because he's, when you pick him up, he's like trying to hold a Slinky. He's very nimble and, and like this, okay? He's just, and so I, I call him Slinky, but actually the cat's name is, no, Oink, as in Oink, Oink, like what a pig says, Oink, Oink, Oink. His name is Oink. Um, I did not name him. He's not my cat. He is Zachary and Lexi's cat. Uh, so he's like he is like a slinky kitty though. He's like really trying to wrestle this cat is like trying to wrestle a slinky. All right. Um, and he's that. I mean he's yeah. Sounds like lion and Kit Kat. Okay. <laughs> is he a ragdoll breed? No, he is a tuxedo cat. Actually, he's black and white tuxedo cat. He's got uh, little white feet on the front, white socks on the back, a white uh, chin and breast, and then the rest of him is all black. He's got big green eyes. He's very, very pretty. Um, so he's short-haired, short-haired uh, tuxedo cat. So um, he's a boy and he's young. Um, so he's very rambunctious. He's, not, he's less than a year old, I think. Um, he's very hyper. Um, he needs a lot of stimulation, uh, and he's, he's, he's always getting into something. He's always jumping on things. He's always knocking stuff off. Um, he is very beautiful, but he is kind of an asshole. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, he, he's, he's rambunctious and because he's young and he's, he has a lot of energy. So what he does though, he does the funniest thing. Because he comes tearing through the house and he he runs up to a dog and he tackles them, okay? He doesn't try to hurt them, but he kind of comes up to their side and he just like hugs them, okay? He, 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 just, he, he just wraps his arms, his front, he jumps up on his hind legs like this and he wraps his arms around their, mid, their middle, okay? And the dogs kind of freak out about it. They're like, what the fuck? So... <laughs> um, Fizz Gig is a bit of a diva and a bit of a princess, so it really freaks her out whenever the cat does this, and the cat does it to her all the time, and she's all like, Mom, save me, what, what the fuck is this, right? Um, but Miha was like, it, I don't know, like, I, I felt that the cat was too aggressive, and Miha just didn't know what to do with it, and it was kind of like, it was like the first cat that Miha ever met that she didn't like. And I think she was having a bit of a mental identity crisis because she's like, wait a minute, this is a cat and I love cats, but I really can't handle being around this cat because it's, he's so rambunctious. So I, I, I think you should try the key lime ice cream too, because um, it's awesome. Um, 
ha he has been fixed. Uh, yes, he has been neutered. Um, he does eat like a little piggy. Uh, so he definitely, the oink name can fit him, but I never call him oink. I usually call him slinky or call him kitty. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, Raven Half Moon, would you like a coupon code? I'll be more than happy to give you a coupon code. Would you like a 50% off code or a $1 sampler pack? Your pick. You are the next winner on TGI Gen. Can I just say that I think the 2017 promo offers brilliant value for your money? Yes, you may say that, Simon. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Anyway, so what was happening was until next month, um, okay, just let me know, like send me an email or, or put it on the winner's form or something um, and I'll extend the expiration date um, to whenever you need it. So just let me know how long you need me to extend it and I can do that. So do you want a 50% off or a $1 sampler pack, please. Um, he's not aggressive, he's just rambunctious. Like you said, he's not like mean. He's just, he's just got a lot of energy. And how long is the coupon good for? Um, it'll be two weeks. It's good for two weeks from today. 50% off, excellent. Raven half moon there we go all right so raven half moon i am putting a link in the room um i need you to go there and fill out the form and i will email you your coupon code yay so um anyway what was happening was is that he was so rambunctious and like i say he wasn't being mean he wasn't scratching or biting or he wasn't being mean he's just rambunctious um, and I think it was it was freaking Miha out and what was really upsetting to me was that Miha was not even hanging out downstairs she she started doing this weird thing where she would go upstairs and she would just sit at the top of the stairs in front of our bedroom door and she would just sit there all night like I mean not at night while we were sleeping but like all evening she would not come downstairs and she would not interact with the rest of the family. I would pull out treats and I'd be like, Miha, come get something to eat. And like, she wouldn't even come downstairs or I would get her to come downstairs and then she would take the treat and she'd eat it and she'd go back upstairs. She'd just sit there at the top of the stairs. She wouldn't, she wouldn't play and she wouldn't interact or cuddle or nothing. I mean, it's just crazy. All right. Yes, I know who you are. I was, it's Sammy Joe. I know. But just let me know, and maybe on the form or something, um, how long you need the coupon code to go for, and I'll extend it. So, my pug, oh, pineapple upside down cake. Woohoo! That's awesome. Thank you. David, it should run till the end of January so I can repeat the order when I get paid again. <laughs> we've already been, uh, We've already been running it for like three weeks now, so it's kind of done. Um, uh, well, that was just it. We have a theory, Dolores, that Miha knew that Pepper was dying um, because she was staying upstairs and she wouldn't come down. And I think she maybe she knew that that the time was coming and she she can handle it, or that's just how she dealt with it. Um, because now. David is sick because just last night, um, Miha was downstairs uh, with us while we were watching TV. She was paying more attention to the cat. Um, the cat did get up and ran around and chased her a little bit. And she did go upstairs for a little while, but she was downstairs a lot more last night. And I'm, I'm just, David's theorizing that Miha knew Pepper was dying. Um, and that's how she dealt with it. I don't know. She didn't want Pepper to be alone, and it said the animals are dumb. Um, well, no, she she wasn't with Pepper though. She she actually stayed away from Pepper because um, Pepper was downstairs with us. Um, Pepper was always downstairs with us. He never go. He never went upstairs. Um, we have a puppy patch up there that they would go up there and use the bathroom, but um, 
that he would go up there, use the bathroom and come back. So, um, and Miha wasn't spending time with Pepper. She actually stayed away from him, uh, like for the last month, month and a half. She, she stayed upstairs all the time. Uh, so I don't know. It's an interesting theory, staying away from death. Uh, and, and maybe, and maybe that, that could very well be the case. I mean, it's a, it's a theory. Um, I think it's really amazing to see that Miha and the cat are playing because I really felt that, that Miha thought the cat was too aggressive or just too rambunctious and she couldn't handle it. Um, so that the fact that they're playing is pretty cool actually. But I do, I do think she's sad. I think she's very sad that Pepper's gone. I think she knows that Pepper's gone. I'm not sure if his gig has figured it out yet. Um, we'll see. I don't know. How is Fizzgig doing, David? <laughs> What's Fizzgig? What's Fizzgig doing? You said Fizzgig. I know Fizzgig and the cat are not playing. Fizzgig is not a wrestler. And that cat is definitely a wrestler. Oh, it's cool, Simon. Fizzgig is, um, she, she is. She's. She is, or she will. She watches. She watches them wrestle. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> I, I, I know she will. She will grieve in her own way. Um, I know that she was closer to Pepper. She's definitely closer to Pepper than she was um, to Miha. Um, she gets really jealous of Miha, but she didn't have a problem cuddling with Pepper at all. Uh, so she would, and she never cuddled with Miha. I mean, occasionally I might wake up in the morning to find them sleeping next to each other on the bed, um, but not often. Uh, they just, they just didn't cuddle much. Um, would you guys like to see the video again? I kind of want to watch the video again. Can we, can we watch the video of, of Pepper, um, that David made last night? I have it, I have it all queued up if y'all want to see it again. I'm sure you did, Raven. Okay, I don't mind. David came home and he spent hours in um, in the office. He didn't want to come out, didn't want to watch TV or nothing he, until he got this done. Um, and he put it up on YouTube last night. So you guys can all see it on our YouTube page, the Higgy Sigs YouTube page. Um, without further ado, this is our little tribute to our sweet little pepperoni. Life is a book that we study Some of its leaves bring a sigh There it was written by my buddy Yeah, we must crawl, you and I Nights alone Since you went away I think about you All through the day My buddy My buddy, nobody quite so true. Miss your voice, touch of your hand, along the door that you. My buddy, my buddy. 
buddy, your buddy, Missy. Nobody misses you. I miss your voice. Touch of your you hand. Yeah. And I long to know that you understand, my buddy. My buddy, your buddy, Missy. Hi. Yes, I know. I miss him so much. I really do. He was. He was 16 and a half. So he was definitely, um, he lived a very, very good life. Here's the, the amazing thing, actually. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank David. David did a beautiful job. Um, here's the really, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you cry. But uh, we just, we really, really loved our little pepper. Um, I, here is the amazing thing, though, about pepper. Um, he apparently did not come from a line of healthy dogs, okay? Uh, he was, uh, David picked him up, I, I guess, I don't know, some friends. I, I'm not sure exactly where he got him, but I know they had a litter of chihuahuas, you know, like purebred chihuahuas. Um, he had, uh, how many siblings did he have? Like three or four aside from him? He had, there's a, you know, maybe, was maybe four or five in the litter. And um, they're, they all died. Like all of them died of like these horrible, like genetic diseases um, within like a couple years. Um, they didn't have, I, I mean, they all had like, they had heart disease and, and just these genetic, like horrible genetic things that happened to them. They all died. Um, he was the runt of the litter. He was the smallest one and didn't, and he lived to be almost 17. I used to tease him. I used to say, you just took all the good genes in the DNA and left all the shit for your brothers and sisters. You killed them all. <laughs> um, so it, I mean, you know, he, we, we, David really lucked out when he, uh, when he picked Pepper out of all, well, actually, and I just, I actually just found this out the other day. He actually brought two of them home. Um, he brought home a little girl as well. Uh, they named her, there was Pepper and Puddles and, um, but Puddles, Puddles didn't last either. Uh, Puddles died and, uh, all the rest of them died. Uh, Pepper is the only one who lived to be as long as, as he, as old as he was. Uh, so yeah, they, they are, you know, I, I actually from, I, I don't, I, I can't verify it, but Fizzgig, uh, is rumored to have been the runt of her litter as well. Um, I got, I didn't get Fizzgig. I, I didn't, how do I say this? Fizzgig was a friend of mine's dog. This friend, um, said she, I, I mean, I came to visit her one day and this little bitty tan and white fluff ball came running out of the back room and came up to greet me. Um, she said she was at a convenience store and these people were sitting outside a convenience store and they, they wanted to sell her because she was the runt. Um, I guess they, I don't know if they were breeders or what, but they said they didn't want her. So they sold her, uh, for like 
to, to my friend Lynn for like $250. And Lynn uh, bought her outside of a convenience store. Uh, so while she is most likely purebred, I don't have any way to prove it. And I don't have papers on her or anything like that. Um, but they didn't want her because she was the runt. Um, she's not a runt anymore. She's like 12 pounds. She's a little porker. She needs to lose a pound. But <laughs> um, she's a great dog. She's awesome. Like, I love her. And she doesn't have any... She doesn't have bad teeth. She doesn't, she doesn't do great with her teeth. But... Um, other than that, she's a pretty healthy little dog. Um, my dog had a stroke when he was 13 or 14. So my vet told me it was only fair that I did the right thing to my best friend. Absolutely, Simon. It's it's one of the hardest things to do is to make that decision. Um, you had a dog named Cujo? Aww. Yeah, and, and that was the thing. I didn't know how to handle it yesterday because every time I've ever lost a pet, it was because of a you know medical problem or something physical happened that that I had to take them to the vet and I had to have them put to sleep and then I, I let the vet take care of it. Um, I'd never had one pass away um, in my home before, so I didn't really know what to do. I like, called up Banfield crying, "Oh, my dog died! And I don't know what to do." And um, they gave me the number to the uh, to the, crema the pet crematorium, which was just down in Decatur, which wasn't too far away. Um, and we drove down there and we took, uh, succumbed to a stroke. I think the gentlest German boxer cross you could ever want to meet. And my son named him after a rabid St. Bernard. <laughs> I, I see, I kind of assumed that Cujo was a bigger dog, like a pit or a St. Bernard, but it was a German, German boxer. That's sweet. German Shepherds and Boxers are awesome dogs, though. I love them. Lion took a total 180-degree shutdown, and the vet came out at home to help him cross the Rainbow Bridge. I have a paw cat. I'm getting, um, I'm getting the paw print, the paw print thing as well. Um, it was, you know, I, it's one of those things where, you know, I mean, like when you go to a funeral, like, you know, God forbid anybody has a loved one who passes away. Um, you go to a funeral home to set up the arrangements and, you know, there's this one part where there's a fine line that I think these people have to walk because you don't, you know, I'm sure it's very easy to feel like you're taking advantage of somebody when they're grieving, but on the other hand, you don't want to not offer them extra services if they want it, you know, so... We went there and I had already, I, I was on Amazon, like on my phone, on Amazon on the way there. And I ordered a little keepsake urn, um, which will be here on Monday um, from Amazon. Um, so I had that taken care of already, but I got in there and there was like all these little mementos. Um, there was like, you could have like some of the ashes like melted into glass and they could be like, you know, little, little paperweights or necklaces and and all this stuff and you know and, and you just you just want it's like you just want to do all this stuff um you know but i but you don't want to be taken advantage of either because i mean this stuff is expensive um but i did i did splurge on the extra 35 dollars um to have a little paw print made um it's like a plaster square about this big and they'll put his name on it and it's in a little book that you can put a picture in uh, so I'm, <laughs> I did, I was like, I, I did cave in on that one. Um, but the, the people at the crematorium were so, so very friendly and they were, uh, I just found out about Mongolian sky burial. I want to be eaten by birds. Yeah. Okay. It's worth its weight in gold. I want a shadow box, but they're just too expensive. Uh, well, like I said, I mean, you know, there was, like I said, there were these like necklaces that you could have, like the ashes made into a necklace, and and there were like these little little glass statues that have the ashes in them, and and all this stuff, and you know, when you're grieving like that, you know, you just you just want it all, and uh, but they were very good about it. They weren't pushy. Uh, she, you know, I I actually had to ask her because I, I saw it on the order form. I said, what's this paw print thing? And uh, she showed me what it was, and I was like, yeah, you know, David was like, yeah, we, we want that, we want that. Um, so, um, but they were they were so very nice, and they were so understanding, and, and like they brought out a basket that I could put him in and put a blanket over him, so it was just really sweet. 
Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've heard that. Um, I, I, I don't think I could afford that. <laughs> I've heard about people put, making, you know, like cubic zirconias and stuff like that with uh, people ashes. Um, probably couldn't afford that. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, I, I, the dogs are awesome. They're just awesome. And I know, it, like Sam was saying, the instant feeling is to want to go straight out and get another dog. Um, part of, I mean, part of me really wants to. And, and, and I, but right now, I would just, I, I, it's like I just, I just want Pepper, you know. I'd want to go out. I'd, I, if I got another dog today, I'd probably get a Chihuahua. Cause I'd, and then I would be upset because the dog wouldn't be Pepper. He wouldn't act like Pepper. He wouldn't do things that Pepper did. And then I, you know, I, I probably would resent him. So I, I know better than to want to go out and get another dog right away. I know I need to, I need to go through the process of grieving Pepper and, you know, before I consider getting a third dog. Um, and I have, you know, I, I mean, I told David this morning, I was like, I, I don't, like, I don't even want to stop and think about having to do things in twos now. You know, I, I've been doing things in threes for so long. You know, when I when I pull out treats, I pull out three treats. You know, when I pull out, if I'm gonna, you know, anything that I do, I, I divide it up into three pieces. Like if I'm gonna give him a bite off my plate, I divide it up into three pieces. Like I don't even wanna think about doing things in twos. It's like, you know, instead of threes and it's, it's hard, it's really hard. Um, but I do, I, 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 I miss the little guy. Um, and it's going to get harder when I go home. And I need to go home because I want to cook dinner. Um, you know, I might even cook that cook that thing I was thinking about cooking tonight. I was going to make this. There's this thing on my Facebook. If y'all haven't seen it, I want to be made into an olive tree so people can eat me. <laughs> I did too, actually. I didn't even take it out of my purse. It's still in my purse. Isn't this sad? Here's his little harness. I put, I made, I gave him a camouflage harness to make him look tough. He has a little matching leash too. A little camouflage harness. Look how little he was. Look how tiny he was. That was it. This is him right here. This is how small he was. And I figured it would be, it'd make him look tough if he had camouflage on. So yeah, this is my boy right here. It's still in my purse. Fizzgig has leopard skin. Miha has zebra because Fizzgig is tan and white and Miha is black and white. My husband's alerts didn't go off. Oh no, it's the moon. I'm sorry. We're supposed to send our guide dog's harness back to the school, but I've had lions harness their two guide dogs. Oh, well, you'll get another one. And you can use it on that dog, too. Blame Smoking Soldier. He has his phone on mute. <laughs> Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, they, they take a little piece of your heart with you, with them. And, um, but you know what? I think your heart gets bigger. That's, that's the other thing too. When you have a dog, your heart gets bigger. So when they take a little piece of it, it just makes room for more. She was 14. Aww. That's a good long life for a pug though. Pugs don't usually live to be that old. Simon, apparently that's what Fizzgig does when I'm not at home. I, um, David, that's how David gets me to come home. If I'm, if I'm late, if I'm running late, he takes a picture of Fizzgig sitting, um, near the front door, staring at the front door and not moving. And he's like, she won't, he's like, I tried to give her a treat and she wasn't even interested in it. She's just staring at the door waiting for you to come home. Um. So yeah, that gives me a big enough guilt trip that I come home. <laughs> oh, thank you, Latin Lady Vaping. Uh, yeah, we've been talking about him a good bit today. As you see, I have a little, little tribute of him up here. I love that picture of him. I think he looks so beautiful.
I do think I'm going to need to wrap it up though today. Um, I know that uh, you've only got an hour uh, before Mod Envy comes on, um, and I hate to leave it to just be an hour, um, but I'm pretty sure y'all will all come back. I know you guys have been missing Mod Envy. Micah took great pics of Lion. Oh, it's so easy though, because I mean, dogs, I don't care what kind of dog it is, they're so photogenic. I mean, they're so, I'm, I will, Smoking Soldier. Thank you so much. Um, I will feel better. Um, we're just, it's its only been a day. You know, we're still just kind of adjusting. I didn't get anything done yesterday. I, I got a little bit done. Nate came in and, uh, you know, he, he did uh, make juice, um, but I didn't get it done in time for the post. Um, but it all, anything that was supposed to go out yesterday did go out today, so I'm good. Um, well, the last, there hasn't been Mod Envy, actually. So I know you guys are missing Mod Envy. Mod Envy will be back on tonight. Um, I know Tiger's been under the weather. Well, it's technically, it's been three weeks since we've seen it, Nitro. That's what he's saying. Um, this will be three weeks since the last one. Because it's been three weeks since I've casted. And, uh, and, no, I, and I'm good. I'm good. Um, I went home early yesterday uh, just so I could cuddle with the dogs, and it was so emotional. I was so emotionally drained. You know, I, I it was, yeah. Of course, feel free. Spoil something special for us, Nitro. <laughs> we are giving away. Oh, awesome, Ray. I could have sworn I've seen you here before, but that's awesome. You're giving away something. When is Nate at the shop? Nate's at the shop here every day. Um, he usually gets here between one and two, um, and he'll stay, depending on how much we have. I mean, on Mondays, he's usually here pretty late because uh, Mondays are always kind of crazy. So he usually doesn't leave until six or seven. Um, but, oh, we would love to have you here. Something pretty cool. It is something everyone can use. We're giving away three of them. Look at that. Look at the buildup he's given us, too. He's given us that buildup. He's making us all. And winners will be able to choose. Look at it. Look at it. Look at him going. And it is made by Alone. A mod stand. A wrap. Woo. Mod stands. Fidgets. <laughs> Three fi fi fidget fidgets. I don't. I don't know what that is. Do you got a link? I want to go look. I don't know what it is. I have. I haven't. I haven't perused their website in a long time. Oh crap! What was I just saying? I don't know. Oh, oh, about Nate. Nate, he he gets here um, by two. Those charms you can fiddle with on your mods. Oh, there it is. There we go. Let's take a look at a fidget. Fidget, fidget. Spin gear. What does it do? Okay, I, I'm, what does it do? I have no idea what those do. The Empire Symbol Spinners. It allows you to fidget. Oh, oh, it's just something. Oh, okay, okay, I know what those do. Okay, I thought it was something that you put on your mod. A Tibetan prayer wheel. <laughs> you know, Simon, um, there's, I, th I think there's a good market for that because there's not too many people out there that make them. 
You hold it in the center and spin it. Okay. Yeah, I've seen a lot. I've seen those fidgety type things. Okay, I thought it was something that that you vape with. I'm like, I don't get it. Um. But Simon, I think that that's um. There's not a lot of people out there that make mod stands, and uh, the few out there that do, um, really have a corner market on it. You know, I know that Alone makes them, and um, I know the Breeze makes them, and I don't really know anybody else who does. So. I mean, I'm sure there are other people out there that make them, but you know, I, I think there's a really good market for that. So anyway, what I was saying at um, uh, about Nate, Nate gets here about two. And like I said, I mean, it's one of those things, the way that our week goes, it's, it's always really busy in the beginning of the week. And then it's sort of, dies off like by Wednesday or it gets lighter and then it maybe might pick up a little bit on Thursday and usually by Friday it picks up more um, like you know shop orders place their orders uh, usually by then they want it for the weekend or whatever and um, two of the mod stands you can't get anymore J wraps does have stands I think it's I think it's a category on um, on the J wraps website let's see here Cup holders, yeah, mod stands, here we go. I'll give you the link. Cause I know you can have them custom made too. Here you go. This is the category for mod stands. Yeah, Alone is the owner of j -Raps. But yeah, if you are in town, Miss Latin Lady Vaping, um, and you want to come visit, um, I would say come, actually, I would suggest you come like after, if we know you're coming, then Nate will of course stick around. Um, but I would say come after five, um, because it gets, we get really busy. Um, basically, you know, when I come in and I, I make the, all the labels for the outgoing orders, and then I label the bottles, and I put them all in baskets, and I put the baskets in the lab, and then Nate comes in at around two, and he makes all the juice, and then, um, and then as he's making it, I'll shrink wrap it and put postage on it and um, get it ready to be picked up. Um, so it, it's kind of busy um, between two and five, but after five, it, it, you know, we start wrapping things up, so it would probably be best if you came after five. Are you, um, I know, why, why did I say if you're in town? I was thinking rich. I don't know why. I, I don't know why I, said, I was thinking that. I know you live here. <laughs> By the way, LLV, um, we are having a Billion Lives event. And um, you need to know, um, I hope that you will buy a ticket and come to the a Billion Lives. We're going to have it at the Studio Movie Grill in Duluth. Um, we're, it's going to be on January 26th at 8.30. Um, we're also having a pre-party show at the East Sagan Vape Depot on, um, from like 6 to 7.30, um, where he's offering hors d'oeuvres and champagne for free, free champagne. Uh, maybe they'll have some orange juice too. We can make free mimosas. And, uh, then we're going to go see A Billion Lives over at, um, the Studio Movie Grill in, uh, in Duluth. So, Please, please, please buy a ticket and share it with everybody you know and see if you can get them to buy tickets or buy tickets for them. Um, either way, uh, we need to pack this house. Pack it. Excellent. Woohoo. Yay. Um, the other thing you should know, Latin Lady Vaping, if you're not already a member of the GSFA, is uh, we're having a big members meeting uh, four days before that on Sunday, January 22nd. Uh, we're having a members meeting over in Marietta at the Vaporite Labs warehouse um, on Sandy Plains Road. And um, definitely you need to come to that too. Um, if you're not, if you're a member, you can be there at 12. If you're not a member, we're opening it to the public at 1.30. We have a huge uh, panel of big names to talk to everybody. We got Greg Connolly coming, Dimitri Sagrafiotis coming. Um, we've got the Georgia Link lobbyists are going to be there, and uh, the State Affairs Manager Jake Butcher from the VTA. Um, so, and we're broadcasting it live here on VU Live. So even if you can't make it, you can still watch it. Um, 
but you know of course we want to try to recruit more members to the GSFA and we want to make sure that we get uh, the good information out there um, for you know everything that's going on with the uh, with the FDA and the regulations and all that good stuff I absolutely will Skype you that info um, so yeah okay um, I think that's all the announcements I have to make um, it is nine o'clock I have been casting for four hours uh, I can't believe I've been talking for four hours straight. <laughs> I've missed you guys. I really have. Um, but, you know, it's a good way for everybody to see um, all the good things that the GSFA is doing uh, for the vaping industry. Somebody gave me a thumbs down. Oh, <laughs> whoopsie. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's okay. It was just probably a troll. Uh, there's only one or two makers here who sell on eBay here in the UK. My father's working on new concepts. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, absolutely. That's really cool too. Hugs to you too, Carrie. Thank you so much. Hugs, hugs, hugs. All right. I'm going to get out of here. Um, thank you guys for hanging out tonight. I really appreciate it. Uh, come back in an hour for Mod Envy. And I will definitely see you tomorrow between four and six for Trench's Funny Farm. And, um, you know, just kind of keep VU Live open because we got really awesome shows that happen all weekend long. Uh, so I will definitely see you next Saturday as well. And hopefully I'll be more prepared to go into the lab and we can make some juice. All right. Good night. I love you guys. Bye. Mwah. <laughs>